Murphy said that he is not on. We didn't see him yet. Uh, Kate Morley. Present. Welcome, thank you. Vice Chair Kevin Parks. Present. Welcome. Uh, Nick Kraft. Uh, Lieutenant Hernandez. You joining us this evening? Uh, here, Lieutenant Hernandez. We've got Jeff Bauman here. Um, and looks like uh, Stephanie uh, Santana, the uh, other staff in attendance here. And then I'd like to recognize um, Councilmember McCarthy has joined us this evening. Welcome, Councilmember. All right. Um, all right. So let it let's move into item one preliminary general business. This starts with um, public comment. I would like to advise everyone that's here this evening, this afternoon. Um, this meeting is being recorded, so we have started that um, for public comment. This is the time where you can come up and address Transportation Commission for items that are not on the agenda. For items that are on the agenda, if you would please wait until that item is called and then I will engage um, and ask call for public comment on each one of those agenda items that we have and that will be the opportunity to address the commission on items that are on the agenda. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to address the commission for items that are not on tonight's agenda? If so, um, I would ask you to unmute yourself. Um, feel free to, to share your camera while you address the commission. I would ask that um, everyone that's attending right now, if you would please put your uh, microphone on mute so we don't get background noise. We can hear everybody clearly. I'd appreciate that. Oh, and I would like to welcome Commissioner Spice, who has just joined us. Hello, Derek. Hello, thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, so protocol with these teams meetings, which many are familiar with. Um, if you would, please, you can put a comment, um, just say C in the chat, and that helps me keep track and stay in order and make sure that um, I didn't miss anyone. You can also use the, the raise the hand function. And um, Stephanie or Jeff, I would ask that you would um, help me monitor the, the raise the hand function. Um, and I will also be looking at the chat. So with that, are there members of the public that would like to address the commission that for items not on the agenda? Now is the time. Okay. I see I've got comments for Woody Way. That is an agenda item, so we will hold on those. Got a comment here about Woodland Drive, so we'll hold on that until we get to that particular agenda item. Um, Jeff, I see you have um, public comment. I do, thank you. <laughs> I just took a phone call from a citizen who was at the City Hall front doors and didn't realize the meeting was virtual. And I told them that if they join the meeting later to chat in and we could catch their public comment later. They want to comment on something not on the agenda. So. OK, give you that heads up and I'll pay attention for them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Final call for public comment. All right, let us move to the second order of business here. Um, election of officers. So this is something that we do um, approximately annually. Um, I have served in this role as chair for just a little over a year, and um, I wanted to, to bring it forward to commission this afternoon um, to see if the commission would like to make changes, if, if someone else would like to um, take on the responsibility of chair, um, and so I would like to hear from my fellow commissioners. I am I'm willing to continue in this capacity, but I also want to give others the chance that would like to to be in this this position. Um, so commissioners. 
I would recommend, Madam Chair, that you are honored to do it, and then you should do it another year. That would be my recognition, Bob King. I would second that, um, Madam Chair. You're very concise and excellent in your role. Um, thank you for your service. I, uh, I support that as well, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you very much for your service. I'll chime in and join that with everyone else. Um, then I would call for a motion on that, please. I so, motion that Madam Chair be elected for the next year. A great job she's done in the past year. Kevin, I second. Thank you, Vice Chair Parks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think I'll, I'll abstain. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Happy to serve for another year. Um, I'd like to talk about the position of vice chair. Um, this is currently held by um, Commissioner Parks. And um, in conversation earlier, um, Commissioner Parks um, would like to see if there is another that would um, that would take on the position of vice, vice chair. Um, Kevin, would you like to, to say a little bit more about that or anything more to uh, add? Well, I just uh, will respectfully uh, decline any nominations and this is for personal reasons. I, I cannot serve in the coming year. Thank you for everything you have done um, in the past year. It's um, really appreciate all of your work. So with that, commissioners, is there interest um, in in serving as vice chair for any of my commissioners on the line right now. Uh, this is Derek. I, I have served in that capacity in the past, but I have not been able to make all the meetings. I would uh, nominate Commissioner Morley if she is interested and eligible for that role. Thank you, Commissioner Morley. Sure. I, uh, thanks, Derek. I appreciate that and your previous service as our chair. Um, I, I I am willing to serve in the role. I think a consideration for the commission is I do have a special seat on behalf of Mountain Line, and I think it's important for the commission to consider whether or not they think that's a uh, role I should serve, knowing that it is a special appointment. I, you know, Commissioner Morley, I, I've been on it for a long time and with my special and I, I don't see a problem serving in his vice because we know we do a lot of public meetings and can carry on in that role. So I think you do a great job. I think the uh, commissioners in the um, in those special appointed roles uh, actually have the opportunity to bring continuity to the uh, to the commission. And so I would support uh, Commissioner Molly for this. I would propose a motion to uh, nominate Commissioner Morley as the vice chair. Call for a second on that. Kevin, I'll second. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you all. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. I appreciate the <laughs> vote of confidence, everyone. Wonderful. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. There are none. Um, so we will be moving into new business item two. Um, and the first item of new business is the active transportation master plan, the public release. And uh, I would like to invite um, Jeff, are you handling this one or is, is Martin taking this one on? I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Martin Ince um, to talk with us about the ACP. And um, before you get started, Martin, I'm, I apologize. If um, those that are sharing their camera could actually turn off the camera just so we can maintain bandwidth, I'd appreciate it. But when the time comes um, to, to address the commission, feel free to turn that camera back on. Um, I'm gonna keep mine on the whole time, um, but if everyone else could turn off their camera, that would be great. Uh, Martin Inns. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in the interest of time, and given that you have a very full agenda, I am going to move faster than I ever have given a presentation before in my life. <laughs> and just giving you some of the, the highlights. Uh, we did release the draft active transportation master plan in the, in the middle of September for its 60 day public review. Uh, the slide you see there on the screen is, is a uh, list of, of what's in this draft. Uh, the last two items on that list our planning considerations and design guidance and recommendations for pedestrian and bicycle facilities, and, and those are uh, will be released um, in the coming weeks. They're not part of the first draft, but they will be uh, released to the public uh, shortly, and then will become part of the the ultimately the the final document. And then I'm going to skip forward to uh, we have held uh, conducted one public open house so far. We have four more scheduled. Uh, this is a schedule. Uh, don't bother. Uh, you don't have to worry about writing these dates down. I'll, I'll give you a website where they're listed and there are links provided. Uh, of the remaining four uh, open houses, three will be virtual and one will be in person at open at uh, Bushmaster Park. And then finally, we have a community survey available. Uh, you're all invited. Uh, all the commission members, as well as anybody in the public who's listening who wants to uh, take the survey. Uh, here is the website for it. Again, I'll give you the general website for the ATMP and, and all this information is, is linked there. So here's that website. It is simply the city's website, flagstaff.az.gov slash ATMP. And uh, I'll end there, but if there's any questions or comments, I'm, I'm happy to, um, to answer them. Thank you, Martin. Martin. Uh, commissioners, any questions about ATMP public outreach. This is Kevin. Um, you know, I think we should recognize the uh, the work of Martin to be sure, but also the tremendous work of both of the Transportation Commission subcommittees, um, um, bicycle advisory advisory and pedestrian advisory volunteers like ourselves for the city who have uh, put in a tremendous effort here. I have read the document and I think it's a I think it's a very good document. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Vice Chair Parks. Other commissioners. And thank you, Martin, for having an, at least one public meeting and that and make sure to publicize that thing that, that that's great. Commissioner Morley. Uh, I just want to echo the um, thanks to Martin and everyone who's worked on this plan. I'm very excited to get the public feedback on it and really look forward to it um, moving towards adoption. So I think it's excellent and I think you're going to hear really positive things. Absolutely. Yes, Martin, thank you so much for your perseverance. Is there um, is there anything in particular, any requests that you have from Transportation Commission for support or any um, any tasks or calls for for work on our part that would be helpful to you? Sure, thank you. Just probably two things. One is to uh, take the survey and, and read the document yourselves. And then if you have, uh, if you could share the information, share the survey, uh, share the draft, share the open houses with any of your contacts, anybody that you think would be interested, uh, friends, family, siblings, uh, offspring, pets, uh, et cetera. That would be appreciated. Got it. Do we have any members of the public um, that would like to speak to this particular item? Um, the active transportation master plan. Now would be the time. All right. Seeing none. Thank you for that. That quick update, Martin. We will take the survey. We'll review the document. We'll share with our pets and our friends and our family. Uh, make sure and get the word out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome also uh, Commissioner Kraft. 
joined us a few minutes ago, but I didn't get a chance to to say hello. Um, so we have a, a full commission meeting this afternoon. That's fantastic. Um, I did receive that public comment. Um, Jeff, is that the um, individual that was at the door of City Hall that wanted to have uh, public comment that typed in? I'm looking through the public comments. I don't think so. His last, no, different last name. And he's wanting to talk about something that's not on the agenda. I don't see one that's like that yet on the comments. Am I missing it? Um, Maricopa Street. I guess that's Woodland Drive. Rio Homes, east of Pine Knoll Village. Yeah, that's the Woodland Drive. Yeah, OK. Sorry, thank you. No worries. Julie, what was the URL that was just provided? Because I missed it. No problem. Martin, can you bring that? that For whatever Martin was talking about. Oh, Active Transportation Master Plan. Martin, would you mind sharing your screen again so Commissioner Kraft can get that? Is that when will that be working? Is what I'd like to know. It's the the survey. The website is is uh, up, and the survey should be working now. And to load it and. Yeah, take a look. I'm I'm getting a uh, bad link on that. Thank you for that check, Commissioner Kraft. Um, Certainly. Is all right if we close this particular item and move to 2B, the mountain line, like staff in motion update. Final call. All right. I'd like to move to item 2B. This is Flagstaff in motion. Mountain Line team has been working very hard at this, started the public involvement process. Um, I would like to welcome Busy Collins um, to Transportation Commission this afternoon. Welcome, Busy. Please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Transportation Commission. As uh, Julie so kindly welcomed me, I am Busy Collins. I'm transit planner for Mountain Line. I'm going to share my screen for the presentation. Um, I just have a couple of slides, again, knowing that you have um, a very full agenda and want to respect that. So yes, here's our uh, logo, Flagstaff in Motion. It is a community transit plan. It's our five-year transit plan, but we wanted to brand it a little nicer. And I want to start with why do we need a transit plan? So Flagstaff continues to change and grow over time. I don't think that's news to anyone. And Mountain Line um, needs to evaluate our transit services to continue to meet community need. And this, the outcome of this plan will also enable us to guide investment if funding does become available. Um, and another point on transit plans, so think of them more as mobility solutions. We are transit providers, 100%, um, but there's also, uh, you know, transit can't run everywhere. And it doesn't make sense for it to run everywhere. So how do we support transit? How do we have feeder services? Um, how do we do this in the most cost efficient but effective method? Uh, so that's a you know really considering the interconnected network of bikes and pedestrians, um, micro transit, so smaller buses that are more on demand service, um, mobility on demand. So maybe like um, scooter share, bike share. You know I, I think there's um, some options out there drop off slash kiss and ride kiss and rides a another term that maybe people aren't as familiar with um and maybe park and ride is a appropriate solution as well so really the uh flag staff in motion plan is looking at how this network really supports transit um, and maybe we can find partnerships to resolve um, some of these other modes of transportation that can support transit and the flag staff in motion plan is meant to address how best to provide and fund mountain line transit services. Um, here's some the project stages and timeline. We are currently still in stage one. We are wrapping that up here pretty quickly, hoping to transition into stage two this month, October. 
Um, and so currently we are determining future needs and defining the vision of services. So uh, we had some surveys out there. We still have a public website available that, that will be on the next slide. Um, so we're taking feedback from the public and understanding how can we support your transit needs? Um, what's currently available? How could it be better? What, what you know, later night service is a common one. Uh, more frequent weekend service. Uh, coverage gaps, that's another common response. So, um, you know, really understanding that, getting a good picture, and then also uh, understanding existing conditions. So population today, employment centers today, um, and in the future. So how, how can transit work best today and in the next five years? And then also having a vision for the next 20 years of uh, projected growth and um, making sure that we are setting ourselves up for success for those future um, growth and changes of Flagstaff. And our next, um, so with the problem identification, you know, determining those future needs, uh, we'll be able to come out with some options um, and prioritize implementation for the public, really looking for feedback on um, what is the highest need and what makes sense for our community. Here's a coverage gap. What makes sense here? Um, you know, maybe it's better bike ped connectivity for a smaller neighborhood pocket. Um, maybe it's a micro transit solution. Maybe it's a new transit route. So that's what we're looking and really excited to come out with next. And then over the winter, we're really trying to understand how do we fund all of our priorities? Um, what is that total funding package that's appropriate? What, how, how does that look? Is that a sales tax? Is that a property tax? Is it partnerships with development? Is it, you know, like just really looking at the universe of funding options to make sure that we are um, having the right supportive uh, funding sources that make sense for the services that we're looking to implement. And then the final stage, really looking at like January, February, um, going back out to the public with how do we fund these? So uh, service improvements, and then how do we fund those service improvements? And public, does this make sense? Are you on board? What needs to be refined before we put the stamp on and say, um, board, here is the final plan, do you approve it? And so we are looking to wrap that up in February. Um, should we be looking for um, something to go out to voters in fall of November 2022? Um, that puts us in a really good position. That's all very high level, yet to be determined. Um, but at least we have really great understanding of what the public supports, uh, what transit needs are out there, and how we uh, intend to resolve those. And last slide here is just, I really wanna reach out to the Transportation Commission um, and anyone else on the line. You know, we wanna hear from you. Uh, the website here, flagstaffinmotion.com has complete information about the plan. Again, we're currently in stage one, uh, identifying transit needs and priorities. Uh, would love to hear from you all. It's not too late and uh, we will be, you know, um, updating that website as the project progresses. Um, and then we also have a, a couple other options here. There's a um, email address, flagstaffinmotion at mountainline.az.gov. There's also a phone line uh, to call. There's some pre-recorded information on there. You can also leave a message for us. Uh, and finally, we do have uh, public outreach opportunities. This is one ta uh, targeted public outreach to our uh, wonderful city commissions. And um, definitely looking forward to in um, public involvement stage two, going out and having a open house in the public where people can come and uh, you can look each other in the eyes without a screen. So really excited about all of these opportunities. Um, we will be continuing to use the Flagstaff uh, community forum as a way to get information out there, really get some feedback from the public. Um, and raise awareness about this Flagstaff in Motion Community Transit Plan. And with that, I would welcome any questions from commissioners. Commissioners, do you have questions for, for Busy? Or comments? So Busy, I think I'll ask the same thing that I asked uh, Martin and um, 
aside from visiting the website, um, providing some feedback there, is there is there a request of transportation commission in addition to that um, an area that uh, you would like to see commissioners participate? I love that question. And um, the phase that we're currently in is more raising some awareness, you know, making sure that uh, we're getting people to the website to let us know what transit needs are out there. Um, I do, I would love to come back to the Transportation Commission in a few months when we have some um, service scenarios and possibly funding options and present again and really hear from the Transportation Commission um, on thoughts on those uh, improvements and, and funding sources. So hopefully I'll have an invitation to come back. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Morley. Hi, thank you. I first just want to really thank uh, Busy uh, for all her hard work putting this plan together for us. And I think just a thought for the commission is Mountain Line really wants to be bringing things in front of the commission, getting your feedback and thinking about the transportation system in a holistic way. I think at one point in time, the commission was the traffic commission, and I think that was intentionally changed. And so if you have other feedback for me as well about how we can get Mountain Line in the thought process or what types of things you want to hear from Mountain Line, that would be very useful too. So thank you, Busy. Any other commissioners, comments or questions for Busy? All right. Do we have members of the public with us this afternoon that have questions or comments about the Flagstaff in Motion plan? Now is the time. All right, seeing or hearing none. Um, thank you, Busy. Um, I've actually been engaged in the, the technical or citizens advisory committee as part of Flagstaff in Motion, and it's um, making excellent progress, great questions going out um, to the community about priorities to try to start sorting through that feedback that returns to Mountain Line to see what that looks like as far as frequency and um, service expansion areas. So um, excellent work. Um, thanks for your commitment. Thanks for being here. And um, I absolutely welcome you back in a couple months when you're ready to share more information with the commission. And, um, you know, if you're, you're seeking us to, to weigh in on some of those priorities and next steps with Mountain Line. I so appreciate it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Have a good evening. You as well. All right. Okay, so now we will be moving on to item three, old business. And um, before we go into this, I just want to point out we've got two, um, two old business items that are generally in the same neighborhood. So the first old business item that we're going to move to um, is Boulder Point University Avenue. And this has to do with um, the speeding and some of the, the traffic issues um, on University Drive. The second item on the agenda under new business is related to the Woody Way Gate. So we've been trying very hard to keep these two separate because we recognize that the opening of the gate um, was, was a separate issue from some of the speeding and traffic issues that we were observing um, and that were being reported on university. And we wanted to keep those as two separate topics because that speeding and some of those traffic issues were occurring before the gate was even open. Um, so that was one of the reasons why we split it up. So we're gonna start with um, University Avenue and we have some updated, this is item 3A. We have um, updated information and data related to traffic volumes and speed study on University Avenue um, of Boulder Point. Um, and so at this time, and, and in the agenda, you will also see that um, there was a, a write up here and actually um, in the interest of um, teams and recording for the minutes, I'm, I'm going to read this agenda item. 
Um, staff have collected an additional set of speed and volume data for University Avenue section of Boulder Point. This new set of counts have been processed and reviewed. This version of counts are post Woody Way gate opening, post University Avenue temporary traffic calming and radar feedback sign installations during normal school year conditions. Um, this is an opportunity for the commissioners and neighbors to review the updated speeds and volumes and help set next steps. Several options exist, uh, first being maintaining temporary calming and radar feedback signs through the winter to ensure winter snow plowing operations conti continue as normal and then move to secure funding for design and construction of permanent calming features. Second option, augment the existing temporary calming features with urgency before this winter season to ensure winter snow plowing operations can continue as normal and then move to secure funding for design and construction of permanent calming features. And the third option is design new temporary calming features and work to have them installed this fall or potentially spring. This option requires another round of counts in order to compare this new layout to the existing conditions and the first temporary layout in terms of operations and calming performance. Um, this is staff recommendation is to review the updated data as presented and consider the temporary calming phase of this project complete. Minor expansion of the existing calming features are likely to improve efficacy and do not delay the path to permanent installations. So with that, um, I would like to invite staff um, to um, discuss this further with commission and then I will go into um, commissioner questions. After commissioner questions, I'd like to open it up for public comment. And to make sure that everyone gets heard this evening, we're going to limit that public comment to three minutes um, so that we can make sure that we hear everybody that's participating this afternoon. So with that, um, Stephanie or Jeff, would Thanks, you like Jeff. to take it on? Yep, Steph here. Uh, Steph Santana, Transportation Engineering Project Manager at the city. Um, that was such an amazing uh, summary there. Don't even need to do this presentation. Um, let's see. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Popping this on my screen. And I can see your screen. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to jump right in. That was such an amazing um, intro that I I'm just jumping in right where we are, I guess. Um, so got some pictures up here for you guys for what we've actually placed in the field as our temporary traffic calming measure. Um, this is actually the eastern calming feature. Sorry, the picture's a little pixelated in the background there, but um, I wanted to show you what we've got. We've got a, a center island median here. We've got a bump out over here, and then we've got a radar feedback sign up and running. Um, what we've done here is we've actually had to remove 100 feet of bike lane um, heading westbound. So this is the direction that this is pointing right here. And we did have to remove 150 feet of uh, eastbound bike lane. I know this was a big topic um back when we first presented this of we're taking away the bike lanes and i wanted to make a point of this is that past this point literally right about here where this bump out is is where parking starts um parking starts about where that first house is right here just past tombaugh um so that is actually a parking lane all there so we did have to remove just a little bit of bike lane here and then a little bit of bike lane heading eastbound um what we've done here is we've actually narrowed the travel lanes hoping to um reduce those speeds and we've created a lateral displacement using this bump out here. So um, ideally, we're vehicles driving here near the center line. We push them out to the curb here and then very, very quickly we push them back to the center line in hopes, of course, of reducing speeds. Radar feedback sign. Once again, hopefully they read this. They look down at their, I was going to say thermometer, their um, uh, thingy, odometer and uh, notice that you know they're speeding. So that's that's the intent and the, the purpose of one of these guys. So um, those are the improvements that we made on the on the eastern side. Um, here was the drawing, the original drawing that we had made up, and this might be a better showing you of how much bike lane we did actually have to remove. Um, the bike lane starts heading eastbound, just, just over here near Majestic, the bike lane starts. Um, so we did have to remove bike lane from this is called Tom Boss. Sorry, it's in the in the uh, dark there. Um, from here to approximately right here, and then heading westbound, we did have to remove bike lane from about right here, about at this um, residence driveway close to there, all the way, and then to right here because once again, this is parking over here. So 
Um, you guys have seen this. You've seen this drawing. This is what we tried to implement out there with candlesticks. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, this was the Western temporary traffic calming device. Um, we just literally threw a center island median in. Um, the location, we'll, we'll look at the map on the next page. Um, we also threw a radar feedback sign here heading in this eastbound direction. So the radar feedback sign in this picture is kind of over here um, on this uh, south side of the roadway. Um, here we remove parking. Once again, this is not a bike lane. This is actually parking for these houses that are here. So we moved park, removed parking. Um, a couple houses um, were affected by that here. Um, and once again, we tried to narrow the travel lane down here um, and, and add some def deflection for those vehicles to hopefully slow them down. And once again, the radar feedback sign. Moving on, this was that drawing where we removed parking was from approximately here to approximately here, remove parking from approximately here to approximately here. Change some of the striping up and whatnot for that temporary measure. Moving on. So I think this is probably the important stuff that everyone wants to see here. Um, so um, how have these temporary traffic calming devices affected speeds? Um, this is the data. So we recently took in September of 2021 new counts at these three locations. Um, Woody Way, just to keep that in there, and we'll talk about that at the next item. Um, we did the 11844 one West University, which is this uh, more Western location. And then we did this more Eastern location at 1718 West University. So um, takeaways here, we were able to de decrease speed. So looking at this, um, April is before the temporary traffic calming devices were added, and September is after they were added. So we went from an 85th percentile speed of 31 miles per hour down to 29. Up here, we went from 33 miles per hour down to 31. So we were able to decrease the speeds in both of these locations by two miles per hour. Um, personally, I thought that was pretty good um, with just some candlesticks in the roadway and whatnot. Um, and we wanted to make note that if these devices, if we decide to make these devices permanent, for example, concrete in the roadway, we're really hoping that we'll even see a higher decrease in speeds um, versus just these little candlesticks. So putting a physical barrier out there is, is our hopes that we'll even decrease that speed even more. But but this, we're, we're pretty comfortable with the 29. The 31 could use some work, but we can talk about that in the next few slides. So you guys have seen this multiple times. I know there's a bunch of new people on the phone, so I will uh, briefly summarize um, just uh, the main factors here. So um, these primary factors, which is these two sections here, um, to move forward with any type of um, uh, calming devices, we have to have at least a minimum of 20 points in this uh, primary factor area here. So before the traffic calming device at this location, which is the further east location. Um, we were at 25, which allowed us to move forward, going down to these um, contributing factors location down here. And in order to consider, uh, you know, improvements and whatnot, you had to be 30 or more points. So we were hitting that threshold back in April. With these traffic calming devices, um, we brought it down to 14 and 19, so pretty far under that 30. So we, we feel pretty darn good about this. Um, I wanted to make a par particularly interesting note up here. We are uh, kind of trying to read this. So um, this is a greater than five to 10 mile per hour over the posted speed limit. So for example, posted speed limit out there is 25 miles per hour. So between 30 miles per hour and 35 miles per hour, we were at about 17.4% that were that were going that greater than five to 10 mile per hour range. And we've brought that down to an 8.8%. Um, same here, greater than 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. So that would be greater than 35. We were at a 2.1% and we have brought that down to a 1%. Um, these feel pretty darn good to us, um, but but yeah, I wanted to, to point those out to you um, and I'll do that for the next previous um, residential management spreadsheet that we're going to go over to. Let's see, let me make sure I didn't forget anything. 
So yeah, if we were to look at this spreadsheet now with with what's out there today, we would not we would not need any further enhancements to anything because we do not meet that 30 points down here. So we feel comfortable with that. Um, moving on to the Western location. Um, once again, you're kind of familiar with the spreadsheet now. We're going from April to September. We were at a 33 points. Um, we just brought it down to a 22. So granted, this one would allow it to move on to the contributing factors. Moving on to the contributing factors, we went from a 38 to a 27. Um, so that's under this 30 um, point threshold. So once again, we're happy. We're happy with this data. Um, looking up here between five and 10 mile per hour over the speed limit, 26.9, down to a 17.9% in traffic. And then over 10 miles per hour, a 2.9% down to a 1.8. Check my notes. I think that was all I had. We can go back to these when discussion happens and you guys can ask questions. I'm going pretty quick. Um, Jeff wanted me to look up some crash data as well. Um, so we were able to pull the past five years, January 2016 to December 2020. Um, he just wanted us to pull it just to make sure there weren't any hot spots um, or anything weird going on. And granted, we would we would have loved to pull crashes before we put up the temporary traffic and then also after just to see if there was any type of increase in in uh, crashes due to this temporary traffic calmings. And we just they don't have crashes up that quickly. ADOT and PD don't don't um, get those crashes into the ADOT website that quickly. Um, but we'll definitely be checking that as as time goes on. Um, let's see. So. Yeah, um, I'm not going to jump into this very much. We didn't see any hotspots. We're not concerned with anything. Um, and if anybody has any questions as we move forward, I can definitely come back. So jumping down to here. Um, our goal tonight um, is for a recommendation from the Transportation Commission on how to move forward. And we've come up with a, a few different options, which um, Julie summarized in in the reading of the agenda. So um, let's see, keep the design as it is today, um, which is those two center island medians and one bump out with that radar, uh, with both of those radar signs in both directions. And once again, making that permanent. Um, I think we're to the point where we can we can either say yes to this, we like it, and let's um, let's find some funding for it, or we have got these other two options a little lower here. So um, make little tweaks to the temporary setup. Um, so some examples of this may be adding some bump outs. We had some ideas and some comments from citizens that we may be able to add some bump outs to the western um, temporary traffic calming to to make them you know, have a little more of that lateral movement um, to hopefully slow them down a little more over there where, where our speed, our 85th was still that 31 mile per hour. Um, and another ad that um, many people are concerned with is a, our bike ramps and, you know, closing that bike lane for, for that little bit right there. And um, if uh, bikes feel uncomfortable driving in that travel lane and, and maneuvering those traffic calming devices, we have some ideas of possibly throwing in a ramp or allowing them to actually hop onto the sidewalk using one of the driveways in the area. Um, so those those things can be tested now. Um, hopefully um, we would like to make those changes once again before the snow comes so we can see how the plows maneuver them. Um, and this wouldn't need a huge study to happen again because we're adding devices versus, you know, taking them away or changing them significantly. We're adding possibly some bump outs or some bike ramps to to the design. Granted, I don't know how we're going to test the bike ramps other than um, maybe some signs to encourage bikes to hop on the sidewalk if they feel uncomfortable. Excuse me. Um, and then our last our last option is to try um a whole new a whole new setup um we had some interest from some citizens of saying hey i just think a traffic circle would work way better here in this location um so so that that's another option for us is maybe trying a traffic circle maybe trying a choker or one of the other options that we've presented on previously um this would need to be set up before the snow comes once again um, so we can test it out during winter and then this one would actually require that restudying because, um, you know, when we're done with it, we'd like to compare the two options. Did did the center island median work better than the traffic circles, if that's what we decided to try? Um, so that would push us back to 
another year or so to actually get started with, you know, funding and design and construction of, of a, a permanent solution here. Um, so the soonest we'd be able to take traffic counts is probably early um, April 2022, and then possibly back to Traffic Commission to make a decision back um, in June. So, um, yeah, just as a reminder, next steps would be working on funding. Um, this project is not in any of our budgets right now, um, so we'd have to somehow find funding to to pay for this. And it'll be the same thing with the next um, couple projects that we're going to be talking about. So funding and design and construction and whatnot would be next steps if if we decide to move forward. Um, let's see if, if anybody has any questions about any of the uh, new options or any of the little tweaks that we've been thinking about, um, please jump in and I don't mind drawing on some of our slides and some of our pictures that we that we have and some other ideas. But um, uh, other than that, I'm I I think I'm ready for questions and discussions here. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. So what I'm going to do is go to my fellow commissioners, um, ask you know if they have questions or clarification. Then I'll go for public comment. And I've got a hand up, maybe a few hands up from the public that would like to speak as well as some in the comments. I'm gonna to try to keep track of those. But first, let's start with um, commissioners um, with those questions, then public comment, and then we'll have commissioner discussion to close out this topic. Um, so Commissioner Morley, I believe you had your, your hand up. Thank you. Uh, my question's related to the bike lane and some of the solutions that you're considering like hopping up on the curb or, uh, what the other pieces would be. And then as you're talking through it, maybe give me like a high level, like how, what's the effort level of doing this in the temporary fashion versus doing it in the um, permanent solution? Gotcha. Um, yeah, I'll try to tackle that and then um, I'll have Jeff jump in if I need any help with that. Um, I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to draw on this guy. Um, I think I'm going to keep Google Maps open. So our, our ideas for possible um, bike lane ramps, I think that was probably one of your main questions. I am going to draw this really, really ugly center island turn lane right here. Um, so yeah, um, as of right now, we've got the skip striping coming up to about right here saying, hey, the bike lane's ending right here. Um, and it, it's a pretty much a perfect location to allow those bikes to just hop up onto this sidewalk right here to be able to maneuver forward, maneuver through, and um, and they can either stay on the sidewalk here or hop back in traffic. Um, once again, we've got, I'm gonna do this awkward thing here. We've got a bump out here. Um, another option is if they would like to stay in the travel lane and this, this maneuver here is what feels awkward to them. Um, the bike lane could stay in the travel lane. Granted, this this line is not here right now, but they could stay in the travel lane if they feel comfortable. If they wanted to stay very close to the curb, we could actually pop. We talked about maybe putting a ramp in right here um, to allow this person, the bike, to actually come up onto this um, uh, bump out um, and either hop onto the sidewalk here once again we haven't gotten this far and then hop back into this parking lane since it's not used very much um, or possibly having the ramp you know continue through have a ramp here and a ramp here so those are kind of our options there um, or I, our ideas I mean um, as for this side over here it would literally so once again the bike lane starts right here and then to the west of Majestic here is parking so bike lane this way Running up here, possibly throwing a, a bike ramp somehow. Honestly, we haven't gotten that far in design, but throwing a bike ramp here so that the bike can ride on the sidewalk if they're uncomfortable in the lane, and then another ramp down to get into that back into that bike lane here. So um, that was kind of our, our our ideas, and and we're open to to others. Um, but that's if we keep this uh, if we keep this design here. And I think you had another one. You might need to remind me what the other question was. It was just what would the level oh, I think one of your options was try to make some quick changes before winter and just wondering about the level of effort associated with that. Yeah, so before winter for the bikes um, for the bike option would be a little a little more um, difficult, I would say, um, because we're not going to throw ramps in. But what's out there today and let me see if my picture is actually better to look at this on. Let me see right here. So right here, um, that driveway, yeah, this is going to be very nice. 
Um, so bike lane ends right here. There's a driveway right here, which is what we're looking at on the picture. This is the driveway into the commercial development, so we can kind of ignore that guy. Granted, they could hop onto this driveway. Um, so they could hop onto this driveway or the one that's just right up here and actually ride the sidewalk um, pretty comfortably. Um, another thing we tried to do was space these cones out, right? Uh, candlesticks out right here to allow for if somebody did want to use this fake uh, temporary bump out right here, um, they could actually just go between those candlesticks fairly easily. So um, as for the winter and trying different stuff for the bike lane, uh, we'd probably struggle a little bit because we don't want to actually throw in ramps, but those are kind of the ideas that we had. Thank you. Commissioner Kuhn. Thank you. Um, Stephanie, great job, but hey, I have two questions and actually um, Commissioner Morley asked the one, how, how hard would it be put signage there? I know it would be hard to do the do the ramps, number one, for the bikes. Number two, how confident are you if we move to recommend that we those become be permanent structures that, uh, you know, we saw a noticeable slowing down that uh, you think it would help slow down a little bit more? Um, I am starting with that second question i'm pretty darn confident that that we will see more slowing down just because the bear the physicalness of 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 these candlesticks are um way less intimidating than a big fat hunk of concrete in the middle of the road um i i picture this center island median being semi-tall maybe i don't know three feet tall it's the one similar to on san francisco um, and they've got, you know, the, the beautiful landscaping in it and whatnot. And then a bump out. I mean, you're coming at this concrete barrier versus these little dinky candlesticks. So honestly, I'm pretty confident that we will see a little bit more of a decrease. Um, but I can't promise that. Um, and shoot, I should have written down the first question. The the first question was, would it be hard, would it be possible to put signs for the bicycle? there for the path if we decide this to keep this permanent instead of, i i know you can't cut cut out concrete and do things right now but how about signs yeah thank you for that um let's see so a sign saying are you kind of referring to hey you can hop up on the sidewalk yeah, um, if you're yeah exactly or a directional sign for bicycle exactly yeah there might be a good sign with a little placard with an arrow saying you can hop up right here um that's definitely doable um one mm -hmm. thing that is in the works right now is and it didn't get done very quickly um we actually have a hey bike lane ends ahead sign going in about right here and then um i believe the sign says another one right up here that says um uh share shared lane or something like that uh, vehicles must share the lane i'm sorry i don't have it in my mind right now so we do have two signs that are in the works that are Public Works Department will be putting up that that say that like um, bike lane ends and then hey hey share share the lane bikes and vehicles right here so those are in the works and that will granted not tell you hey you can get on the sidewalk um, but I can definitely do some research and and seeing if there are some signs allowing allowing that I I know we use some for when we do have an official ramp showing that there's a ramp right here. I believe there is a sign for that in the METCD. So yes, long story short, that is very doable. Signs are signs are fairly easy. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners before we go to um, Vice Chair Parks? Let's go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to have to express some concern about um, ramp up to sidewalks for cyclists. A very long time ago, and if Martin is still with us, he'll remember this, when we were working through the, um, the bicycle transportation ordinance for the city on the uh, bike advisory committee, one of the things that we really needed to con concern ourselves with is expectations of motorists for bicycle behavior. And, and I, disfavor an option to go up onto a sidewalk, a mandate to go onto the sidewalk. Okay, now we know that cyclists are likely to hop up onto the sidewalk, but a more experienced cyclist than city streets is not likely to do this. Um, they're probably going to try to share the lane with motorists. And I think that would be, probably be appropriate here, especially since the 
traffic calming devices slowing motor vehicle speed down. I think the real problem is, it's not so much the bicyclists leaving the travel lane, but how they come back in. And, and, uh, and that, that would concern me. Also a concern for uh, people who would be uh, going in and out of driveways, looking for um, what is the cyclist going to do? Quite likely a cyclist won't stop because for one thing, they may not even see a vehicle approaching from behind them. So those are my concerns about um, bicycle ramps. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Spice. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Stephanie. Thank you for a great presentation. Um, I was just curious where you had in mind if there was a circle. I know a circle is a much larger project. Um, is it at that intersection or is it a, a different place on West University? Um, yeah, it would actually be um, instead of the center island median is to actually pop a circle here. Um, and and since you brought it up, um, I we had the idea of, you know, instead of a circle, since we've got this awkward T intersection and I'd never recommend circles here is to do a D. So something like this um, as our circle, I'm using air quotes and then maybe doing a bump out, um, you know, in uh, right before it. Um, I hope this semi makes sense, but um, so still trying to do that lateral movement of a vehicle coming. You push them to the center, you push them back out here to, to an extent as much as you possibly can. And then maybe even once again, another bump out over here. Um, so that's kind of was our idea of, a, of using a, a circle in this location. Um, another option would be doing something very similar to this at Majestic instead of you know this center island median over here but but i think one of our concerns is speeds along the straightaway before you hit this curve so i don't know if i would recommend these two devices so close um but anyways hopefully that answered your question okay and let me know if there are more thank you very much yes i was curious and i do share the uh previous comments on just concern if just say there's strollers on the sidewalk already and we have bicycles jumping up there. I know it's not an easy fix here, but just some other thoughts and uh, thank you for your work. Councilmember McCarthy. Well, thank you, Julie. Um, I, I have a lot of concerns about the uh, bicycle um, problem. Uh, I live in this area, so every time I drive to town, I drive through there. And I have seen various solutions to this conflict, and that's what it is between bicycles and cars. In some cases, I have seen the bicycles jump up on the sidewalk. So, in effect, what we're doing is we're saying that cars are more important than bicycles. And that we're saying that bicycles are more important than pedestrians because anybody that lives in this area knows there is a lot of uh, bicycle and pedestrian traffic. In this area, people are walking continuously. So we're creating, we're creating a conflict that we don't have now. Um, so I've seen people resolve this issue in several ways. One is that the... Uh, Bicyclists will jump up on the sidewalk, taking advantage of the sidewalk over pedestrians. Another, and I've experienced this myself, where the bicycle does not, he takes the lane, which is fine, but then I have to slow down to about 10 or 15 miles an hour until he gets out and then pass him after he's out. And one time I saw a person actually, when there was a, a bicycle in the middle of the lane, they just went through around the um, candlesticks on the left side, which is completely ridiculous, but I actually saw it happen once. So I also have concerns about these houses that are right in the area. You know, where do they put their trash cans? Do they put them on the sidewalk and then block people in strollers? Or do they put them in the street and block the bike lane? Where do trash cans go? Um, so 
I actually, in parking, of course, is another issue. People can't park in front of their house. So I have an idea. Uh, on the south side of the uh, road, in the area uh, where, where we've sketched in these little lines and dots, that's Tomba. Right across from there is a um, stormwater basin. And what I was wondering if we could take a little bit of that land and kind of move the street if we still had some, you know, restrictions, but then we could move the street over to the south and still maintain sidewalks and bicycles. And obviously there'd have to be kind of a a curve to do that, but I don't and I don't know if we can get that land. But we're not talking a lot of land, so it, it might be possible. So in summary, I think uh, maybe we should look at that option of of using some of that uh, stormwater basin for, you know, a bump out. And I have serious concerns about we are prioritizing cars over bicycles and pedestrians. And that is completely contrary to the way that the city is going, what I hear from city council, what I hear at the Metro plan meetings, what I hear at uh, pedestrian meetings, et cetera. So I'll leave it at that for now and let people comment if they want. Thank you. Commissioner Kuhn, I still see your hand up. Do you have a follow up question? Um, for no, my fault, I didn't take it down. Okay, this is lingering. Um, Commissioner Spice, same. Do you have a follow up? Uh, no, thank you. I apologize. I'll... Oh, no problem. I just want to check. Um, okay, any other commissioner questions? Otherwise, I'm going to go to public comment. All right. Hearing none, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, the comments here. Give me a minute as I scroll back to the beginning. All right, uh, the first one that I've come across is uh, David Brink. David Brink, please um, go ahead, unmute yourself. Um, if you could limit your comments to three minutes, we'd appreciate that. Thank you, Julie. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I just wanted to relay my experience biking on university um, that may not be represented in the data that you're looking at. So I often um, bike uh, this route, and I was disappointed that the bike lanes got cut out over what seems like the simpler solution to me of just putting up stop signs at Majestic and University and Highland Mesa and University. Um, but if we are going to do, we're going to avoid stop signs um, by pushing all the traffic out into what used to be the bike lanes has now caused traffic to drive in sort of an unsafe way by me in that the law says I need to have at least three feet um, around me for small cars and five feet for larger vehicles. But cars routinely violate that in that area or there's yeah, a couple of days ago, I was driving, I was riding my bike through there, and the car didn't want to slow down or wait for me, so it roared past on the wrong side of the street to go around the barrier and not have to wait for me. So I feel like there's unsafe driving that's happening as a result of having those barriers up. Um, and I wish that the barriers um, were more protective of the the bicyclist, like. Why not push the cars, narrow the roads by by putting the candlesticks along the bike path to kind of give the bikes some protection? Um, the the one other thing I would want to say is uh, the 
the idea of pushing people up on the the sidewalks i really don't like that um i appreciate the comment um saying that it's the getting back out into the street that's dangerous but also one thing that we're not thinking about is at least on the south side of the road there often through most of the winter the sidewalks are very very icy and not really suitable for driving and almost many times the the shoulder or the bike path there is also not cleared very well so it's so it's also icy but but the sidewalks can be worse and be worse for longer and what are we going to do if a resident doesn't clear their path their their uh sidewalk of snow um is the city going to take the responsibility for clearing that and so anyway i just see it as problematic to push people up on the sidewalk and uh i wish that we would have more um, bike friendly uh, solutions. And, and, and I think that's it for my comment on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Lee Wilson. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Commission members. Uh, my name is Brian Wilson, and I actually uh, do support a new calming feature near uh, Tom. Uh, uh, I want to give you a quick background to put the suggestion I have in context, but uh, also before I do that, I especially want to thank uh, Jeff and Stephanie for uh, taking the time out of their busy schedule to meet with me recently on site to discuss this idea. But as far as background goes, um, you know, shortly after the temporary barriers were installed, I started to receive feedback from owners. And as you heard from several people, Nearly all were concerned with bicycle safety. And uh, on top of that, most felt that the barrier's impact on the speed was uh, minimal. Uh, keeping that in mind, one of my early goals was to try and see if I could assess the effectiveness of the trial strategies that we had and actually compare them to traffic circles that I knew were being installed on Woodland. So what I started doing was driving them all over and over and over and over again. Um, you know, just to compare, if you look at the eastern circle on Woodland, when I was traveling west, what I would do is turn to the right and I'd have to veer left to go straight. Then I'd turn to the left and I'd have to veer right to go straight again. Uh, conversely, when I was traveling west on university, Basically, I could hug the center island, and when I got into the stream right near uh, Tomba, all I had to do was veer slightly to the left uh, to go by the bump out and then be able to go straight again. So just on that uh, simple uh, evaluation, basically, the university has less turning and was definitely easier to negotiate. But what I also wanted to do was to see if I could come up with some metrics. And this was all before our data came back. So I went back to Woodland and I drove through the circle as fast as I could. And, uh, you know, through today, I've done that more than 40 different times. And the fastest I could comfortably drive was about 20 miles an hour. Uh, this morning, uh, I rented a 16 foot moving van and I drove through the circle. And uh, my maximum speed was 10 miles an hour. Uh, I would say that there were no cars parked either before or after the, the circle, which is rare. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, it was 10 miles an hour. Now, uh, ultimately, on university, uh, I'm embarrassed to say that it's pretty easy for me to go pretty fast. Uh, you know, I can literally get up to 35, 40, 45 miles uh, if I wanted to. So, uh, you know, looking at that as a, a simple sort of a way uh, to evaluate it. The bottom line is that qualitatively and quantitatively, the circle on Woodland is far more effective at calming traffic than the university strategy. So now we do have data that uh, Stephanie shared. Uh, you know, it shows there's a two mile per hour reduction on university at both the median, which is the 50th percentile, and the 85th percentile. But I just wanted to share that I think those top line statistics do not necessarily provide a full or totally accurate reading. And what I mean by that 
is about 35% of the westbound traffic going through uh, you know, that calming area is slowing down because they're getting ready to turn left at Majestic. And you can see that on the uh, traffic counts, that, uh, you know, the number of people that we lose turning left. Uh, coming the other way, almost 40% of the eastbound traffic has just turned right from Majestic. So they're just starting to accelerate, but they're still traveling at a slower speed than vehicles would be continuing through from the west side of the university. If you adjusted these summary figures for the slower turning traffic, you would find that the through traffic in both directions is going about two to three miles per hour faster at both the median and the 85th percentile level. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, that's a meaningful difference. I Could you please wrap up your, your comment? Yeah. Uh, one last point is that velocities differ by day of the week. And you break it down on Saturday and Sunday, the speeds are even higher. Uh, so the Woodland Circle is better qualitatively and quantitatively. It's also confirmed by the latest traffic study data. I'd like to install a traffic circle just like uh, in the one on Woodland at University in Tampa. And uh, I think it would slow it down and give much better protection to bicycles. So, thank thanks. you, Professor Wilson. Right, uh, Bruce Higgins. Hi, I lowered my hand because uh, after I raised it, uh, the commissioner, uh, Kevin Parks, and also um, 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 Jim McCarthy covered my concerns. I am a bike rider through there. I do use the um, sidewalks because that lane does not feel comfortable with that one or two percent that decide to rip through there and but if there's anybody on the sidewalk that's walking i i don't go up there but so i think they've covered the issues to be addressed and i'm sure somebody will figure those out thank you now um i don't see any more comments in the chat so i'm going to go to individuals with their hands up uh garrett hall Garrett Hall? Yes, do you have me now? Yes, I do. I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Thank Green. you, Madam Chair, uh, Traffic Commission. Uh, my comments on this are uh, a little bit of our experience further down the line. Uh, I think David had a point about putting stop signs in. I know that's been mentioned by Mayor Deasy before, that that's a way to discourage people from speeding through there. But um, our experience has been that people don't respect the stop signs and they go right through it without hitting the brakes. Um, so. We also have uh, also an enforcement issue, I think, too, because the city of Flagstaff Police Department has uh, got a 30 percent vacancy. Uh, we actually had a traffic complaint that I had to put in uh, for somebody that was swearing at me in front of my kids coming from Presidio. And uh, they said, well, we don't have any officers to really deal with this right now. Uh, it'll be uh, 12 weeks at the earliest before we can get an officer out there. And so I think that this should be also be a part of the uh, formula for uh, figuring out how big of a problem these things are. Uh, is that uh, what is the police department and the public works allowed to do with the enforcement as well with the limited resources that they have uh, and then the impacts that that further uh, places on the residents around that area um, and I think that's all that I have to add to there I'm coaching soccer right now but this is really important to me uh, so I'll, uh, I'll sign off with that thank you, thank you. Mike Barnes yeah I'd just like to add to the Add to the discussion that I think that maybe the September speed data is not necessarily representative of how um, speeds have been reduced more broadly. Um, both of those measurements were taken immediately at both of the traffic calming features. So I think that vehicles are um, returning to their previous uh, level of speeding um, pretty quickly after um, those. So I would caution against declaring victory on the basis of um, those two like semi-complete counts that were done um, in September. Um, and yeah, that's all for now. Do we have any other members of the public 
I, I believe I've caught everyone's hands raised and comments, but if I missed you, please just go ahead right now. And Mike Barnes and Garrett Hall, if you could lower your, your hand raise, that would be helpful for me for tracking as we, as we move forward. All right. Thank you. Final call for public comment. Seeing none on this agenda item, I would like to turn it back to commissioners for, for discussion. Um, Commissioner Kuhn, I, I see your hand is up. Do you have other thoughts? Um, yeah, and, you know, um, I do. I, you know, the stop signs we've, you know, I've been on the commission for a number of years. Stop signs add the, uh, they add noise. And we've done that and we've tried that in other situations. And the noise that they add is unbelievable. Because what'll happen is if, the, like you said, somebody said they'll either run them or they'll stop at them and gun it. You know, so as a situation to fix it, I, I did like councilman's um, suggestion of maybe doing a roundabout there and, and, and added some adding some depth to it. I, I know that would totally change everything with in, in that uh, area of drainage, but that may slow down and, and it'll help the bicyclist situation we created. And I should ask um, Jeff and Stephanie, um, you're really looking for a uh, general recommendation from the commission on this matter for next steps. It's uh, not necessarily a formal action, just a recommendation. Can I confirm that with you? Hey, Jeff, um, do you mind taking that one? Yes, that's correct. We're looking for a recommendation on path forward. We, we presented those three or we offered those three options, but certainly there's places in between. We've heard a lot of discussion tonight, so it sounds like we might end up somewhere in between one of those options. But yeah, we're just looking for guidance on what uh, we're going to do next, okay. but no formal action. Thank you. Commissioner Spice. Thank you and uh, thank you everyone for your commentary. Um, at, at that space, I'm intrigued by uh, Council Member McCarthy's suggestion to uh, ex extend uh, south into that drainage, which again, I don't know the feasibility of that, but um, you're trying, well, we are trying to uh, compress all these different elements into a finite space. So uh, just as I mentioned, I'm intrigued by that and thank you for that observation. Commissioner Morley. Hi, thank you, and thanks to everyone who came to talk to us tonight. Um, I have, I hope I get to the qu core question here, but then I have some general comments as well. So I think, yeah, I think I'm headed towards some hybrid solution. I think the bike lane issue is not fully settled, and so I don't feel ready to move forward with investing in a permanent infrastructure, in, in investing in a permanent solution. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I don't want to lose um, some of the speed progress we've made over winter. So I wonder if we can like keep the radar sign in place. I know we've seen that work really well elsewhere. Um, and then uh, keep working on the further of the final design before we um, invest. So, but I think related to that, I have some other just high level thoughts about moving forward with the high level or the final design. Um, and it's that, uh, I think that this is tied to just the overall shift that council member McCarthy was talking about in the community and wanting to uh, rethink the way we're providing for bike and pedestrian infrastructure and yes not prioritizing the car over the other modes but making at least bringing them up to an equal status in their thinking um, and so and I guess I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the design by committee uh, or commission or public because uh, we all have many ideas, but I do, I think that there are best practices out there that we should be going to and looking for solutions from. So, for example, NACTO, the National Association of City Transportation Officials, I believe, is kind of a up and coming, more progressive thought process around our group of individuals uh, in the engineering realm. So I think we're still there that are really thinking about urban design and roadway design in a different way and that 
membership with NACTO could potentially bring us a bunch of new design options. They even do like two hour workshops with a bunch of engineers where we could show them the our problem and they would all these engineers would problem solve it with us and with best practices. So I'd be curious about and I know that memberships can be expensive, but I think staff are working so hard on trying to resolve these issues all over our community. Quite honestly, we hear them every month at the commission. I almost wonder if providing those resources or or getting new design guidelines in place or having traffic calming design guidelines that already bring in all these best practices will actually end up reducing the level of effort by staff because I know Stephanie is working very hard on all these issues. Um, and so, yeah, I think and then just the one other high level thing that none of you will be surprised by is that I think uh, I really believe in that. Um, form we use as a guidance for us as to what can be acceptable or not. But I think there's the underlying issue of is 25 miles an hour really the right speed limit for a neighborhood. And my opinion is no, when people are driving that fast, I think people are complaining because it feels much too fast for a place where kids are. And so that's a, as we look at the holistic system, I think that there's a fundamental issue there because our form says, we don't need to do anything if we put this in place, but my guess is people still feel like there's a problem at 27 or 29 miles an hour um, because 25 just is too fast as a baseline. So thank you. And hopefully some of that was helpful to answering your question tonight. And um, Stephanie, would you please bring up that slide of the, the three different options? I think while you while you do that, I'll offer just a few of my observations and comments and try to recap a little bit of what I've heard. Um, so first, I'm pleased that um, what the data that has been collected shows a reduction in speed. Um, to Kate's point, when you're standing um, right there, you know, if you're standing right on the, the curb line and a car goes by at 25 miles an hour, it can feel a lot faster than actually, you know, 25 miles an hour given the, the space um, and proximity of the sidewalk to the travel lane. Um, so I do appreciate and I'm, I'm happy to see that um, the temporary measure using the metric that was established from the Transportation Commission to take some of that subjectivity out of the decision making process is showing that what's been implemented is helping to reduce those speeds and we have that data to show it. Um, however, what I've heard and not just in this meeting, but in previous meetings is um, absolutely the concern about taking away that bike lane, um, even even though it is at that point where it transitions from bike lane to parking. Um, it's that it's that gray area. And um, and so what I'm hearing is that, you know, we've seen this reduction. We have something that that. That is showing to be effective and might be more effective once it's concrete rather than flexible candlesticks. That we need to look at edge improvements for the bike lane and for pedestrians. And I would also say that um, although it feels that we're prioritizing vehicles, what we're trying to do is slow them down to improve bicycle and pedestrian safety. Um, so, how can we slow down these vehicles? and still provide that that bicycle and pedestrian friendly infrastructure. And I think there's a, a way we can look at um, extending out this project to include some of those edge improvements. Um, I would agree with um, Commissioner Parks about um, the use of a driveway and sidewalk for combining those two uses. Um, that does give me a little concern, um, but again, we are a citizen appointed commission listening to our, our neighbors and citizens and um, also, you know, considering the, the experts and the resources that we have um, and the information provided. Um, so that said, I it seems to me that the recommendation is is making the tweaks to the temporary setup. Um, and those tweaks really being focusing on the, the pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure. That said, um, commissioners, and that's based on what I've heard from um, some of the citizens and my fellow commissioners, is that something that my commissioners, fellow commissioners agree with, that we can look at um, expanding what we've done to include that, that bike and pedestrian infrastructure? Uh, Madam Chair, this is Kevin Yell. 
Um, this is where I was going, uh, going back to the three options that we should, um, we should take option two, make little tweaks to the temporary setup and, um, and do focus on um, bicycle and pedestrian travel. Sorry about that. Adjacent to the uh, traffic calming. Uh, that, that's, that's, how I, that's how I would recommend it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Madam Chairman, this is Bob Kuhn. I, I would go with that too, with the tweaks, because I was a little concerned about the the, the, the bicycle and, and pedestrian area. If we can tweak it a little and leave that this winter, just keep things slow. Um, Commissioner Spice and then Commissioner Morley. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just uh, observing with the uh, focus on this issue and the uh, citizen input. I would uh, recommend that it be studied again. Um, one of the tweaks PowerPoint uh, items is would not need to be studied again. Okay, and um, Commissioner Spice, when you say study again, you mean additional counts uh, or speed study through there or what? Yes, what? I think it's helpful for everyone to have that data. Um, it does help drive the decisions and um it'd be also be very interesting to see you know which remedies are effective thank you commissioner morley yeah i i think i'm aligned with where everyone else is headed in terms of the tent let's make the temporary tweaks under number two i think the second part of the number two option was to move forward to secure funding for design and construction and i guess i just want to clarify that I, you know, I think that's more than maybe minor tweaks and that we're not just going to go build that design. We're going to redesign before construction. That's all. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Stephanie and Jeff, do you feel like you have um, clear recommendation from Transportation Commission or are there other questions that you have for us? Um, I'm going to I'll jump in and let Jeff go after me if that's OK. Um, so what I'm hearing is we're kind of liking the idea of these um, possible center island medians, um, but we're uh, we're looking for a, a means of getting the bikes through it as well. So what I'm picturing is maybe like some type of separated bike lane moving through <clears throat> moving through this traffic calming device. Sorry, my voice is going. Um, but um, one of our goals is to still keep those speeds down so we can't make the road wider so maybe something separated so we're still keeping that travel lane narrow maybe separating the bike lane but keeping some type of bike lane through that through that um eastern traffic calming device um with that are we okay with the western one where it's actually parking Um, and, and Jeff, if you have anything to add to that, you please jump in. Yeah, before we move to the Western, um, the Eastern is gonna require right of way for any of these. Well, it's gonna require more space and I think that's gonna require right of way from the church. I heard talking about drainage, but I think it's the church property that we're talking about on the South side of the road. So that's a huge question mark for me. That, that makes this a significantly more complicated and expensive project. We'll, we will look into it, um, but I don't think we, we can't make any tweaks temporarily that will do the things you're looking for. I don't I can't envision. I think these are permanent fixes or permanent changes. So we'll, we'll brainstorm, uh, but I see us just coming back in December and talking about this again. Um, and doing some property research and doing some layout work and trying to figure out some costs for this. Because again, I think it requires moving curbs, expanding sidewalks, buying right of way. It's very significant. Um, the, these aren't small tweaks. Understood. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Morley? Uh, I wasn't sure if you wanted us to weigh in on the question about West, the West one. Um, I don't, I'm not really concerned over the loss of parking. I think, um, uh, yeah, that one's not a big design issue for me, but I think if there are lessons learned about the first one, 
um, that we could apply to the second to enhance it in terms of a final design, I think that would be really useful. I agree with Kate. I agree with Katie too. Commissioner Parks, Commissioner Spice. Agreed. Thank you. Uh, yep, go ahead, Commissioner Spice. Thank you. Uh, I agree also. Um, and uh, thank you, Jeff. This is a uh, more complex result in the future, but uh, for the time being, Thank you for looking into the uh, temporary options. All right, uh, I'm gonna do a final call for council member McCarthy. If there are any comments that you have, otherwise I'm gonna close out this agenda item. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanna point out that on West University there, there is a bike lane, and I don't know what it's called legally, but there's a white line down that street, which every bicyclist considers to be a bike lane, and especially on a curve. I think that's important. So that's my only comment. I And I've made my other comments before. So thanks for checking in with me, though. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Stephanie, for all of your hard work. Uh, yours too, Jeff. Um, and creativity on this. I know it's been a lot of brainstorming and, and research on your end. Um, so again, thank you for your patience, perseverance. Um, so with that, I would like to close out that agenda item and um, going into our next old business item. And this is going to be um, the Woody Way Gate. It is 534. I would like to take just five minutes, just a very brief five minutes here so I can get a drink of water and others um, can do the same. So if we could meet back here right at 540 and get started again, um, we're going to start with the, the Woody Way Gate. OK with everybody? Hearing no objections. OK, please. Um, I'm going to turn my camera on when I'm back. If you could do the same commissioners, I would appreciate that so that I know that you've returned.
Okay, I see Commissioner Kuhn, Commissioner Parks, Commissioner Morley. Um, Commissioner Spice and Craft. If you're here, just uh, show your face or put something in the comments so I know you're back. Madam Chair, I did see he just raised his hand. OK, thank yeah. you. OK, Commissioner Spice is back. Um, Commissioner Kraft, do you give me a hand raise or something in the comment? A sign of attendance? Be super. Can you see me? I cannot see you, but I can hear you. So that's great. I think we have all returned. So um, I think we're ready to resume. Thank you. Um, appreciate the few minutes. Appreciate the public's patience on that. Right. So we are moving to item B under um, old business Boulder Point uh, Presidio neighborhood Woody Way Gate. On April 20th, City Council heard a citizen's petition item to reinstall the Woody Way gates. The council did not agree to reinstall the gate and push the, the concern to staff. The concern beyond the gate installation is general obedience of traffic control devices, crash patterns and safety, speeding and traffic volumes. Uh, at the June 2nd Transportation Commission meeting, the commission also recommended not replacing the gate on Woody Way. At the September 21st City Council meeting, a second citizen's petition was heard regarding Woody Way. This petition asked the City Council to make Woody Way a one-way roadway westbound. City Council did not take on this item, but again asked that the Transportation Commission hold a public meeting to discuss Woody Way and make a recommendation to the City Council with respect to Woody Way. Um, Transportation Commission staff will present our recommendations to the City Council at a future City Council meeting. Um, staff is prepared to present several options that have been previously discussed and recommend to help the commission formulate a recommendation to council. These options include leaving the Woody Way open, um, closing Woody Way, prohibiting parking on both sides of Woody Way, currently parking is allowed on one side, um, make Woody Way a one-way roadway, either eastbound or westbound, install traffic calming in the vicinity of Woody Way, or make the Axe Handle slash University Avenue loop one way. Staff recommendation is to keep Woody Way open per existing city policies that encourage neighborhood connectivity and vehicle miles traveled reductions. These policy statements are found in the Regional Plan, Zoning Code, Engineering Standards, and Carbon Neut Neutrality Plan. Um, so I, I do have a couple of comments before opening or turning it to staff um, related to that council fair item and the discussion on 92621. Um, it was the, the Hall family is the petitioner and they're the, the family that's directly impacted by these behavioral issues of speeding and negligence and complete disregard for signage. Um, they currently live at the intersection of Axe Handle and Woody Way at the T. Um, they shared some very emotional accounts of their personal experiences and observations about motorists using Woody Way. Um, the petition was signed um, from approximately 17 um, households. Um, and then um, there were also emails that we have received and public comment um, either in favor of or uh, in favor of keeping it open or in favor of closing it since that time. Um, so I, I wanted to just do a quick summary of some of those comments from City Council um, before we get started here. Um, Councilmember Shimoni had asked um, to explore mitigations that don't impact bike and ped. Councilmember Aslan um, was in favor, wanted to have it on the record to close the gate. Um, uh, Vice Mayor Daggett, um, her comment is that people should feel safe where they live, and it's a bigger problem that we see all around town related to speed and angry drivers. 
Council Member Sweet um, had questions about um, traffic calming, if that could help. Council Member McCarthy had a discussion on data and how it was collected and provided a history of previous council discussion um, and the promise of the road being open to future development. It was very clear that not taking a position, just providing that history for some of the newer council members. And then uh, Mayor Deasy had a call for action that something must be done and requested that it go through our commission um, and that the fair, the fair process is very strict um, in, in how they're doing it. So they are looking to us um, to provide a recommendation in the form of a council meeting in the future. So with that, I would like to turn it over to um, Jeff or Stephanie for a presentation. Perfect. Thanks, Julie. Um, once again, you kicked butt on that, and um, I've got a little summary that states some of that stuff as well. Um, so jumping right in. Um, I don't even know if I need to read this. Um, it's literally what you just said. Um, let's see, traffic commission will then choose an option. So that's what we're looking for from you today. Um, we have been asked, you know, when the next council meeting will be for this item. And we were going to wait to see what happened today um, to see when we can schedule that next council meeting. Um, but that will happen after today. Um, moving on. So I um, wanted to jump into this data once again. Um, you just saw this for the previous item, but now we're looking at Woody Way more over here. Um, so April 2021, we counted 806 vehicles um, going both directions, eastbound plus westbound. 806 vehicles using Woody Way. Um, in September 2021, just last month, we counted 971 vehicles um, per day using that. Um, I want to note on here that there is not currently a, spitting, a speeding issue related to the Woody Way. Um, looking at all this data, just kind of running through a few of these. Um, axe handle, we're at about 16 miles per hour. Woody Way, we're at about 20. Um, Highland Mesa, we're at about 26. Um, so just wanted to kind of run through that in this area that we, we do not have a speeding concern here. Um, this is mostly just related to volumes from what we've determined and then we've, we have hurts from citizens which we'll discuss a little bit further um, some other issues in the area but um, yeah moving on um, so we filled out the residential management store uh, score sheet sorry um, of course it doesn't meet for speeds like I just mentioned this is on Woody Way specifically um, so we are pretty high for volumes um, our residential management uh, spreadsheet here shows that um, residential locations um, you get one point for every 50 vehicles per day, over 200. Um, so you can see we're at that 700, uh, 971 vehicles per day. So we're getting some points there. Um, one of the big factors on here, which is something that I, I do struggle with um, looking at this spreadsheet and how, how to calculate it, is cut through. Um, so this is once, once again a, a big part of this primary factor is cut through traffic. And I, um, I'm actually going to let Jeff jump in here right now to. Um, possibly discuss some cut through options of, of how we can possibly calculate it and, um, you know, study it in the in the field. Jeff, you there? I am. Thank you. Yeah, so we we don't we have not done a thorough study of the potential cut through um, volumes on Woody Way. So what we have some estimates or some numbers off to the right side of the page that give us an idea of what is probably happening. Um, out here. So you can see the arrow to the left is representing traffic going westbound through Woody Way, and the arrow to the right is representing eastbound. And that left column is at the AM period. So as it's labeled, it's a four hour period between six and nine. It takes a while to get enough cars to kind of see a pattern. So in the three hour period in the morning, 57 going west and 131 going east. So not balanced exactly, but but not all in one direction either. The afternoon you can see is even is actually pretty balanced. 176 going west and 125 going east. So this is telling us people are it's it's not a typical if there is a lot of cut through going on here, it's not typical because typically you would see, you know, everyone headed in one direction in the morning and everyone headed in the other direction in the afternoon. But so this is just kind of a snapshot. It doesn't really exactly tell us the whole story. Another thing that we've looked at is just the total volume on Woody Way. Obviously, when the gate was closed, it was zero, and now it's it's uh, much higher. I think it's it's on the screen here. It's 971 is our current count. So it went from zero to 971. 
University Avenue didn't change that much. It didn't go up by a thousand cars. So it's it seems reasonable and likely that many of the trips on Woody Way are coming from the east side of the neighborhood, which is Boulder Point, going west to either to Presidio or to other destinations. And many trips are coming from residents in Presidio and going east um, through Boulder Point. It, it, this one's a little bit tricky to understand what cut through volumes are. Typically cut through the way we've dealt with this in the past with the Transportation Commission is, you know, vehicles say coming from um, Gore and headed to, it's a bad example, but maybe it isn't, Home Depot at lunch. Um, that would be cutting through a neighborhood. Typically, we haven't considered trips that are in a neighborhood that are exiting a neighborhood. And while these two pieces are have different names because they were developed by different people, it's really one big residential, it is one big residential area with two names, Presidio and Boulder Point. So we're struggling a bit with what actually is cut through. Is it cutting through the neighborhood or is it trips that are in the neighborhood that are exiting out the other side? Um, we have a way of measuring this. Basically we take um, in position, in this case, it's five people at all of the exits and entrances to the neighborhood and then one person at Woody Way, so that's two, two, and one. And we record vehicle information, usually license plates with times. And then we compare, you know, we all take all those notes back together and compare notes and figure out each car that went through Woody Way, did it start in Boulder Point and end on Woody Mountain Road or did it actually start further to the east? And we haven't done that yet and we could do that. Um, this is something we've been thinking about. Uh, we actually don't have five people in our group, so we'll have to find some volunteers to help us, but um, that's something we could do to get a really tight number on what exactly is cut through. It doesn't feel like that's the most important issue here. I think what I'm hearing the most important issue is just the total number of trips, regardless of their, if they are your neighbors or not your neighbors or headed to destinations outside of the neighborhood. So. Just keep that in mind that we could get a really tight picture, at least for one hour or two hours in the morning or afternoon, uh, relatively easily on, on the cut through specific issues. So for now, that spreadsheet that was up for the score sheet um, is blank because we don't have that data um, available to us. So just wanted to explain that kind of long form, but we haven't, most of the commissioners I don't think have have worked with this particular issue. So I just want to get you up to speed on that. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, moving on. So what to do with Woody Way? Um, I'll get into more detail of each of these options because we're going to go through kind of a pros cons worksheet on the next page, um, but I'm going to run through these fairly quickly. Um, so our options are leave Woody Way the way that it is today, which is open, um, no gate, nothing going on over there. Um, close Woody Way. Um, that's either with a physical barrier, you know, a concrete wall or or possibly a gate like it was before. And maybe that could still allow emergency access. Um, there's issues with that, but we'll discuss them. <laughs> um, and then uh, make Woody Way a one way roadway, which was similar to what the petition had said, um, either eastbound or or westbound there um, and still allowing emergency access. Um, prohibiting parking. So those are the three main options, um, those three that I first listed. And then some other things that we've heard from the neighborhoods, from the neighbors and and um, ideas um, that that people would like and, uh, you know, put out there um, are prohibiting parking on both sides of Woody Way. Um, currently, there's parking prohibited just on the south side. So the north side parking is allowed. Um, install traffic calming in the vicinity of Woody Way. Um, once again, that's those um, traffic circles, islands, um, bump outs, all those types of things. Um, and then making Axe Handle slash University Avenue a one-way loop um, and, and, and using diverters, so, something like we had done on Dodge. Um, and we'll we'll discuss that further if there's questions about, about how that would work. But um, I'm going to jump straight into the uh, pros and cons table here. Um, so running through it, we've got all of the different options listed at the top here that I just listed. We've got some pros and cons that we've tried to come up with. Um, I'm sure there's some that we may have missed. Um, 
but um, I'm going to start running through all these guys. Um, so leave Woody Way open. So leaving it exactly how it is today, um, that allows us to, to have that connectivity. Um, the regional plan, the zoning code, engineering standards are all encouraging connectivity. Bikes, peds, all that stuff is connecting two neighborhoods together that were um, it, it included in, in the original plat. Um, the, the, the neighborhoods had, had planned for this to happen and have that connectivity. Um, another pro would be uh, Presidio has shorter travel times and so does Boulder Point um, when they're going in opposite directions. Um, emergency call times are shorter. Uh, municipal services are more efficient. Uh, municipal services include plowing, sweeping, recycling, trash, all that stuff, um, more efficient. They're allowed to get through it a lot quicker. Um, the cons of leaving Woody Way open are the high traffic volumes, um, the, the, the semi unexpected 800, 900 vehicles on that small roadway chunk there. Moving on to um, closing Woody Way. Um, some pros of closing Woody Way are no traffic volumes on Woody Way. It would go back to zero like it was when that when that gate was there with a lock. Um, another positive of closing it would be the about approximately 35% reduction in traffic volumes on University. Um, so we did calculate that it, it it did increase traffic on University about 35%. So that would be a reduction if we closed it back up. Um, some cons, of course, no connectivity. Um, Presidio and Boulder Point once again have longer travel times. Um, oops, sorry. Um, Force traffic to alternate routes. Um, so if we do close that, we're pushing traffic back out onto Route 66 or alternate routes. Um, one of the problems we had when Woody Way Gate was closed, it had a physical lock on the actual gate, and that lock was cut. I don't even know how many times. I know um, our other employee had to replace it multiple times. So people were cutting that lock, um, vandalizing it. Um, and 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 that's that's what would happen if we did allow emergency access while closing Woody Way Gate is, you know, we'd put that lock back on there, or do some type of solution like a bollard um, blocking it, and then the emergency access would have to come through, move that bollard, unlock that gate to get through. Um, so that's another possible con is that um, emergency call times would would increase again. Um, Municipal services, once again, those plowing street sweeps um, are more inefficient with that closed there. Um, I'm looking through my notes as I'm doing this. Um, let's see, making Woody Way a one way. Um, so some pros of making Woody Way a one way are there's less traffic volumes, of course, um, probably about half, you know, half of the traffic volumes. Um, small, small volume reduction on university. Once again, if we're reducing this by about half, that'll be, I don't even know that percent, maybe half of 35 or so percent of reduction. Um, and it's not a full closure, so that's probably a pro is, you know, we've at least got one way moving through this roadway. Um, the cons of making Woody Way a one way, eastbound or westbound, is less connectivity, of course, 50% less connectivity. Um, I think the biggest one for making Woody Way one way is it's difficult to enforce. So, you know, we estimate about 10 to 15 percent of the people will ignore the signs or the diverter or whatever we decide to put there to make it a one way and they will just drive through it. Um, and there's no way we can have a police officer out there and, and stuff like that. So um, difficult to enforce. Um, and once again, it forces traffics to alternate routes. Um, Moving on to prohibiting parking. So once again, those first three ones were the main ones, and these are other options that we can put with one of these options, or we can do them separately, or um, they're just uh, extras, I guess is what I'd call it. Um, so prohibiting parking, we've heard this from an, um, a few of the neighbors that they would like to prohibit parking on both sides of Woody Way. Um, like I had mentioned before, parking is currently prohibited only on the south side of Woody Way. Um, Woody Way is, I believe I measured about 17 feet uh, width with a parked vehicle there. So um, there is a truck that parks there quite often, and we have about 17 feet width between that parked truck and the edge of the asphalt on the other side. Um, so that is acting like a queuing street, which is good for slowing speeds down. Um, so if we remove that parking, um, a con would be speeds are likely to increase. 
Um, some pros of removing the parking here is that um, site distance would increase. Um, a few of the citizens had some concerns about people making that turn onto Woody Way and being able to see oncoming traffic and whatnot because it is a queuing street. Um, so another pro for prohibiting parking is um, making that roadway not a queuing street anymore. So two-way traffic can easily pass each other. Um, Moving on to prohibiting parking on Highland, sorry, prohibiting parking on Highland Mesa and Axe Handle. So it's kind of the same concern of um, of uh, sight distance and and it being a queuing street. It feels very tight when cars are actually parked on it. So some pros, like I just mentioned, increase sight distance and it wouldn't be a queuing street anymore. And of course, a con is speeds will increase. Um, these roads are more of a straight shoot. At least Highland Mesa is a, a nice long straight road and if we remove parking we're making it wider and speeds will increase um let's see moving on to traffic calming so traffic calming was brought up for possibly at the intersection of woody way and axe handle and axe handle and highland mesa so some type of calming like a traffic circle or whatnot in those in those intersections um some pros of that are speeds will decrease for turning vehicles um, and less stop sign violations. So we have had a few complaints that people are just running that stop sign because they can clearly see down the roadway when they pull up to it and they feel comfortable just running that stop sign. And of course, they're cutting the cutting the curve because um, they're going at a, um, a speed um, quicker than coming from a stop. Um, so decreased speeds of turning vehicles and less stop sign violations if we if we do provide some traffic calming at those intersections. Some cons would be volumes are not likely to decrease. So I believe one of the biggest concerns is volumes, you know, that 800 added vehicles to Woody Way. Um, volumes are likely not going to decrease because we're not able to um, increase that travel time by enough to force them out under Route 66. So we could pop five different traffic calming devices in this neighborhood, and I, I still feel like they're going to choose to go through the neighborhood versus go up to Route 66 to get to Presidio or vice versa to get to Boulder Point. So volumes are not likely to decrease if we do that, and it is more difficult to maintain and plow and whatnot um, for those plows to get around those traffic calming devices on those narrow streets. Um, Another option that we heard from citizens, um, it may have been just one citizen's idea, I can't quite remember, but was to make Axe Handle University a one-way loop using diverters. Um, I almost just want to kind of explain this because it's it's confusing um, when I'm when I'm looking at it, when I see it written on here. So sharing my screen here. So the request was to make university and axe handle a one-way loop. Um, so for an example, and it could be the opposite loop, you could put a, um, a diverter right here, which forces vehicles heading southbound on university to go straight versus making a right turn. So these vehicles would then go straight, come up here, turn onto Woody Way and whatnot. Um, and then for the opposite direction, there would be a, a diverter here saying, hey, you can't make a right off of Woody Way and you have to go this way. So granted, they're not one way streets. It's not saying that, you know, these the this this neighbor can't go to this person's house or whatnot because they're one way streets. But it's kind of a diverter diverting people, to, forcing them to take a different route to get there. Um, of course, there's some very negatives and some very positives about doing this. Um, it would um, I'm just going to keep this like this so I can go back and forth. Some pros would be it's splitting the traffic volumes in half. You know, we're taking half of the volumes um, that would typically be coming here on this Highland Mesa. And we're taking half of them and throwing them down here. Um, and then we've got a nice list of negatives over here. Um, this was never included in the original plat. So none of these houses down here to the south were ever expecting this. You know, this was this is oh, this Woody Way has always been here. So so it was it was semi expected that this would be the route for them to take to Woody Way. So um, some of those residents that are down here were not would not be expecting those higher high volumes going there. 
Um, it's difficult to enforce. Once again, we expect a certain percent of traffic to say we're still going this way and take those right turns or left turns that, that we're trying to force them not to take. Um, this forces traffic to an alternate route. Um, like I said, those neighbors that are um, not not used to having traffic down there when we're pushing them down down to that area. Um, and this increases travel times for certain residents as well. Um, let me see what I missed here. I know I did. Um, Quick, oh. Just pause one sec here, Stephanie. Um, Commissioner Kraft and Commissioner Spice, did you have a, a question for Stephanie that you wanted to ask before we move forward? She answered my question in the presentation. Thanks. Okay, wonderful. All right, Stephanie, thanks. Keep going. Perfect. Thanks, Julie. Um, yeah, so I wanted, I did want to um, pop one more comment in here is if we were to do something like this, if 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 you live on fresh air in this cul-de-sac or whatnot, we would be, you know, not allowing people to make a right turn. So they're used to going like this, getting to their cul-de-sac, getting to their house. We would be forcing them to go all the way around here, um, all the way up and to get to their house. So just longer travel times for some of the residents that live in this neighborhood. Same with people that live all the way up here. They'd have to go all the way down this huge loop to get up there. Anyways, that's my that's my rant on on that one. Um, I think I'm ready to move forward if that's OK. Um, let's see. So tonight's goal, summarizing it once again, we've got these three options that we are asking you guys to choose from to make a recommendation to council. Leave Woody Way open as it is today, close Woody Way or make Woody Way a one way. Um, and then we have these other possibilities of additional features. Um, prohibit parking um, on both sides of Woody Way. Um, install traffic calming in the vicinity of Woody Way or that axe handle one way loop using the diverters. So I think I hit everything um, and I think we're ready for your guys' discussion. Thanks. Right. So what I'd like to do is um, first call on commissioners if there are questions. After we get through any of those questions, then we will go to public comment. And then after public comment closes, then we'll have commissioner discussion and um, hopefully arrive at a recommendation for what we would like to communicate to to council as our recommendation. Um, so with that, uh, let's start with Commissioner Kraft. Yeah, the question I had was um, that this opening was planned originally. It was part of some kind of plan and um with that in mind i'm just wondering why the change in terms of why are we considering a change if this was always planned and i thought it was planned and um that everybody was notified of the plan long in advance that the the woody way would open so um i'm just curious what what leads us to break that original plan? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I, I believe it's been these um, the citizen petitions that have come forward and the the frustration of 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 the high volumes that have been added um, and, and they're the citizens worried about speeds and volumes and all this stuff and asking us to consider something different, consider a change, consider mitigation. So I, I believe that's what's brought all of this on. OK, thanks. Yeah, I mean, this is a really tough one because we have. Seemingly almost equal amounts of the populace are for and against this, so. Um, I don't see sort of a clear answer um, at this point. Commissioner Spice. Please. Go ahead, Commissioner Spice. Thank you. Um, I would support the continued uh, paradigm. Um, it may or may not happen. One of my thoughts is if that gate is closed, um, the snow removal won't be successful in the event of an emergency. Um, the plows can't really clear a closed gate. Um, 
so that's just one of my comments and there are many um factors uh pro and con on both sides of that issue but um i would just throw my support to as uh the last comment was this was part of the original agreement and it's a thoroughfare thank you commissioner coon i i too do agree with both of that i mean again we we've dealt with this for a while they've known the gate was going to be open it's been communicated you know it's, it's one of the goals of the city to cut down you know by certainly you know easy for bicyclists and walkers i you know I, I I believe we need to keep that gate open and leave it as is. If we if we hadn't communicated that and they not known that, I could do it. But the communication has been for years, and there was a percentage set on it, and when it and when it opened. Any other commissioner questions? Otherwise, I'm going to open it up for public comment. Um, Madam Chair, this is Kevin. Yes. yes go ahead. Yeah, I don't I don't have questions. I do want to thank Stephanie once again for a uh, a pretty uh, a kind of a detailed presentation. But um, I will just go ahead and say that I support um, keeping it open as planned. Um, it's it's a public thoroughfare. And as with all our public thoroughfares, there are ways that they could be managed to perhaps um, traffic calm. But I absolutely would support uh, neighborhood interconnectivity as much as we can achieve in five stars. Thank you for those. Right. I am going to open it up for public comment. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with those in the meeting chat that have um, said they want to make comments and then I will go to those individuals that have raised their hand. Um, so you're welcome to not raise your hand and put it in the chat, but I, that's that's the way I'm gonna manage this tonight. So I make sure that I um, I give everybody a chance to, to communicate with the commission. Um, if you would please um, keep to that three minutes, I wanna make sure that we leave time for everybody. So with that, I would like to start with Brianne Hall. Hi, yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Brianne Hall. Obviously, I've stirred up the trouble with all of the uh, citizens' petitions, but that's just because troubles come my way. On December 29th, an out of control driver coming from the Presidio going too fast, um, fast enough to romp the curb and knock the stop sign over. On January 25th, another out of control driver coming from Presidio romps the curb and hits the stop sign hard enough to knock it over. Twice in less than 25 days, our stop sign was hit by out of control Presidio drivers using Boulder Point as a cut through. Cutting through Boulder Point instead of using Route 66 saved Presidio residents at the very most nine tenths of a mile. However, if they speed through the neighborhood, not stopping at posted stop signs, it saves them maybe two minutes. Meanwhile, endangering the lives of residents of Boulder Point. This cut through does not save on carbon emissions. When we purchased our home in, in at Boulder Point, Presidio was nothing but trees. We lived in a peaceful and wonderful community that is being ripped apart by Presidio drivers using our once quiet streets as shortcut and raceways to get to places like Walmart and NAU. March 3rd at 2.07 a.m. on a school night, a 16 year old kid drove through the stop sign into our front yard. He proceeded to drag a 500 pound landscape rock from our yard down the street, leaving it in the middle of the road in his Presidio neighborhood. His tire tracks went over the neighborhood children's hopscotch chalk art that was on the sidewalk. I didn't sleep for over two weeks worrying about the safety of my children. On March 6th, a colored student with Nevada plates ran the stop sign while flipping my husband, children, and two other residents of Boulder Point off, yelling out the window that he will run our stop sign every effing day and there's nothing we can effing do about it. On March 11th, at 2238, a car coming from Presidio hit the stop sign. On March 12th, at 10.02, a car coming from Presidio hit the stop sign. On March 14th, we arrived home from a vacation and there were another set of tire tracks into our front yard. Upon looking at the security camera to see what happened, this is what we saw. On March 13th at 2158, a car coming from Presidio hit the stop sign. On March 13th at 2105, an out of control driver runs the stop sign, does a 360 to 60 degree spin in the intersection, and proceeds to drive into Presidio. March 13th at 2041, a car coming from Presidio hits the stop sign. 
March 13th at 1911, a car coming from Presidio hits the stop sign. March 13th at 1947, a car runs the stop sign, romps the curb, and goes into my front yard again. Axe Handle and Woody Wade were designed by traffic engineers to be 26 feet wide as traffic calming features. With the road only being 25 and a half feet wide, it makes it very dangerous for speeding cars to navigate the 90 degree turn as proven by the busted up curb. So your stats of they're not speeding, they're not going 25 miles per hour isn't true because they're trying to navigate this 90 degree turn. The intersection at Highland Mesa and Axe Handle is not wide enough to handle the increased volume of traffic that opening of Woody Way has created. The traffic study in May of 2021 shows an 880% increase in traffic in front of my home. Uh, 818 cars up from 93 a day. Currently, you're funneling over 1,000 vehicles day, a day from two 42-foot wide streets to one 25-and-a-half-foot wide street. Multiple Presidio residents have proven that they cannot navigate the width of the roads properly, creating hazard to public safety. The only option we have for safety is our police department, who is understaffed and overworked. They come out and patrol the corner as often as they can. We greatly appreciate Flag PD. But like the guy with the Nevada plate said, there is nothing we can effing do about it. There is nothing I as a mother can do to protect my kindergartner and second grader who have to cross the street twice a day to get on the bus. There is something this council can do about it. You can close the road and make our neighborhood safe again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I have David Brink. Hi, um, I'm Lisa Brink. Uh, my husband had to had to leave, um, so I'm just going to read his comment. He wrote it lower in the chat, and then our daughter, Samantha, would like to speak. Um, he wrote, um, regarding Woody Way being open, I just want to say that I was disappointed that the decision was made to leave it open, citing neighborhood connectedness and reducing miles driven for reduced carbon emissions. While the gate was up, pedestrian and bike traffic was allowed, which I actually think connected our neighborhoods. Essentially, no cars going to and and coming from the Presidio neighborhood actually stop in Boulder Point. So opening Woody Way has had the effect of turning Boulder Point into an artery for hundreds of homes um, to, go, to go to and from the rest of Flagstaff. Um, this is Samantha and she would like to share her comment. Hi, my name is Samantha, I'm 10 years old and I live on Axe Handle Way. My neighborhood has been going through a lot and it's very hard to see. Ever since Woody Way opened, there's been a lot of cra uh, a, bit, a crazy amount of traffic. Uh, it's limiting where we can play, and it makes me nervous to play because we're afraid that a car might run into the house. My friends live right at the intersection of Axe Handle and Hila Mesa, and I play there a lot. It has become a super busy intersection and is becoming more dangerous every day. The point where I'm nervous to walk down the street, and it's also dangerous because people are speeding. There was one point where our car and a trailer were parked on the road, causing people to slow down. But people wanted to speed so badly that someone came to our friend's house and told them that they would tow the trailer if someone didn't move it. There has been a lot of anger. Our neighborhood has gotten yelled at, um, so there is more than safety problems. There is also anger problems. We used to have less cars. That, um, that was really nice. Sometimes people would go fast in the past, and but now there are so many cars going fast. Our friends, uh, our friends, neighbor, friends and neighbors want went from living in a peaceful community to a high traffic zone. I'm especially worried about things like Halloween when lots of kids will be out. I'm worried that kids could get hit by cars that aren't looking. Please do something to help our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, we, and just a brief comment, we've lived in this neighborhood for 13 years and similar to the halls, we, you know, bought it at the end of the, the neighborhood. It's always been a really quiet place um, until the opening of Woody Way. And there was a comment made earlier about cut through traffic and, and us living here, very much the perception is that it is Presidio traffic. Um, 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 on all cut through. Uh, we don't perceive it as all as being our neighbors. And I think that's why it's been such a problem because people don't perceive this as their neighborhood. They just perceive it as like, a, oh, I can cut through, I can get fast, I can go fast here. So, the stop so. sign keeps getting knocked over and hit. Nobody pays attention to the signs. When we have a cul-de-sac in our area. So 
we get a lot of people coming and then getting lost in our area that proves that nobody looks at the signs. <laughs> it says dead end, but nobody pays attention to that. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, Melody Bowling. Okay. Um, I don't live in Boulder Point, but my daughter and her family, which includes my two dear grandchildren, do. So I have driven the neighborhood streets for many years. As such, in the past year, I have experienced firsthand the effect increased amounts of traffic from the Presidio have had on this neighborhood with the opening of Woody Way. Boulder Point streets are narrow, so when cars choose to park across from each other, there's only room for one-way traffic. With increased traffic, usually driving at higher speeds, I've had to stop abruptly numerous times for these aggressive speeding drivers who don't feel the need to share the road. These situations have definitely increased with the opening of Woody Way. I have personally witnessed car after car coming up Highland Mesa Drive, ignoring the stop sign at, at Axe Handle Way as they turn left toward Woody Way into the Presidio. And if anyone is watching, um, have seen them manifest their belligerence toward this stop sign and the people who live around it with unacceptable hand gestures and profanity, many times with the neighborhood children being exposed to this unacceptable behavior. It seems that they are making a statement that ends with, and there's nothing you can do about it. For the safety of all Boulder Point residents and especially their children, I'm hoping that this commission can do something about it. I hope that this commission will take the responsible actions necessary, necessary to ensure the safety of all Boulder Point residents by identifying measures that will reduce Presidio traffic through the Boulder Point neighborhood and that these measures will be implemented immediately. Please don't wait to take action until someone is hurt. Thank you. Thank you. Kim Tittlebaum. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great, thank you. I am here tonight on behalf of the Presidio and the Pines HOA, Homeowners Association and the Board of Directors. Um, it's unfortunate that perhaps um, a few uh, inappropriate drivers are um, belligerent the Presidio's name and the 512 homeowners in Presidio and the Pines. Uh, as the Rec recommendation notes to keep it open. Um, the Presidio and Pines Board of Directors supports that recommendation. Of course, they do. summarizing the um, the facts that that have already been presented is that Woody Way was intended to provide secondary ingress and egress and interconnectivity for Boulder Point, as well as Presidio and the Pines. Uh, the street was actually constructed during the Boulder Point subdivision and stubbed out. Um, it was completed with the Presidio and the Pines subdivision. As availabil availability of land is limited and higher densities are promoted by the city, um, ensuring secondary access to distribute traffic volumes and provide for emergency ingress and egress is really, really important. And this type of connectivity is not unique to these two subdivisions. It's found throughout the city in residential neighborhoods. Woody Way serves both communities equally um, as, your, as the traffic counts demonstrated. And um, we don't know what kind of cut through traffic from uh, Flag Ranch or Equestrian Estates or, or workers at WL Gore coming and going, you know, might, might be using this, this section. Uh, the board really believes that to restrict access in a one-way direction, either direction, works to benefit one community over another, and we feel that that, that proposal is disproportionately unfair. Um, we do support keeping the Woody Way connection open, but we're also agreeable to traffic calming devices, whether it be a speed bump or something else to help mitigate traffic concerns um, and help slow traffic down if there's speeding concerns. Um, regardless, in all instances, any decision should be for the benefit of all involved and not to benefit one community over the other. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, I have Garrett Hall.
Hello, Madam Chair and Council Members. Um, I, I have a lot of comments that are prepared here, but I think that we're actually getting a lot off course with some misinformation about this stuff. I was actually the president of the Homeowners Association when this was uh, being talked about, uh, and uh, we had a dialogue with the City Council at that time. So uh, Council Member McCarthy has brought this up in a few meetings, but it's also a little bit uh, incomplete. In um, what we did talk about was with the traffic engineers from this uh, for City of the Pines development was that it was faster to go around Route 66 to go through there. Um, at, the, at the meeting, we made it very clear that it's actually faster to go 45 miles an hour down Highland Mesa than it is to go all the way around to Route 66. Uh, at the time, there was only one manner of egress out of Presidio and the Pines. There has since been another one. The plot for Presidio and the Pines has changed several times over the years. There was supposed to be some connectivity because they were going to have a live, work, play concept. They were going to have uh, some uh, yogurt shops and things like that with residences over top of them. Those have since, uh, since the original developer went bankrupt and the project sat for 10 years, the people that were on the city council forgot about the, uh, they turned over since then. And our agreement was that after the build out was complete to 90% that they were going to open that. And then they're going to, uh, analyze the impact on the neighborhood because this was a big concern from day one. Uh, what uh, we've done now is we've opened it. We've understood the analyze the uh, impact of the um, uh, traffic that cuts through the neighborhood, and it is very uh, significant. Uh, the city council had assured us at the time that if it was a big deal, that there would be measures and that they would consider closing the road. So this was not just like we were notified that this was going to be from day one. Uh, I lived on uh, Axe Handle. Uh, since 2003. Uh, this was all uh, a very fluid process. Uh, actually, uh, Tom Krause, who was the original developer, did not want that road open in the first place. Uh, and so uh, I don't know what's changed since then because they've got new developers. Uh, it's hard to even quantify how much impact this is because of the noise. Everybody's going through this intersection, a thousand cars a day at full acceleration. Uh, the diesel trucks with no mufflers on them are very, very loud. They put diesel exhaust into the air that we can't even keep our windows open at night in the summertime and get the breeze through like we used to do. We have to run our air conditioners. This is actually impacting our electric bill. It's impacting all of our uh, 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 peace and quiet and everything. The, the traffic is nonstop. It's hard to get out of the driveways. Everybody, I can't get away from this. Everybody comes down to me because they know how bad this is for me. And they say, oh, did you see this person run this? Oh, did you see that van flip me off? Did you see this that just happened? Did you see the crash that happened? and I can't get away from this. It's not something to get used to. It's something that is impossible to have. There's nowhere to retreat. And when I'm outside in the front trying to take my trash cans out, water my flowers, clean my rain gutters, things like that, these people come by and the ones that have told me and flip me off and do that, they come by four times a day and they stare and they glare and this is not connecting neighborhoods. These are two different neighborhoods of different densities. Uh, the amount of traffic that cuts through there is very fast. The noise that comes through is going to be hard. Uh, we were just talking about this at the city council meeting about the impact of the noise that comes off of these vehicles. Uh, and then there's also the spinning tires. There's also the skidding tires that hit the cinders and the dust that comes off the cinders in the wintertime. The uh, polishing of the, the snow in front of this intersection is very dangerous. And we're not able to keep cars out of our driveway. Public Works has been un uh, un responsive to our requests. We requested to keep a, a Jersey barrier to keep people from driving into our yard. Uh, no reply given on that. There are no parking signs that are up on Woody Way that uh, one is missing. Uh, we uh, Two years ago, we put in a request for that and nothing back on that yet. They just said that they were very busy and they'd get to it when they could. Uh, the police department has uh, been Hall? out a few times. Yes. Yeah, would you please wrap up your comments so you can get sure. to the next person? Thank you. Absolutely. Um, the uh, the plans that we're talking about, these regional plans and connectivity plans, those make assumptions that we have enough police force to actively manage these things. We don't have that. We're, we've got a very big problem hiring police officers in this town, and this is going to continue to be a problem, and we're bearing the brunt of the impact. The developers was supposed to put in stoplights at, uh, at Woody Mountain and also at Thompson Way, and Route 66 was supposed to be four lanes wide. That hasn't happened, and this is really forcing the traffic in unintended ways, and that's why I think you should consider to close this road uh, because it's a zero dollar uh, it's a zero dollar fix for a huge problem. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, the next comment um, I have from Jason Knackard. Uh, Jason Knackard, are you with us? Um, would you like to um, speak to your comments? Otherwise, I will read it aloud. Um, okay. Actually, I should read aloud because it says, I have no mic or camera, but would like my comment to be recorded for posterity. 
I live in Boulder Point directly across from Woody Way. It sucks. I am in favor of one-way streets, closing Woody Way, or nearly any other option that would reduce the current loud, dangerous, high-volume traffic in our neighborhood. The number of students that live in Presidio and drive recklessly through our neighborhood represents a real liability that the city should really pay attention to before something bad happens. Okay. All right, I have, uh, let's see, I have another entry for Lisa and Samantha Brink, but I think we've heard from Lisa and Samantha earlier. Yes. Okay. Um, and then uh, David Brink um, deferred to you on that. My next meeting is starting, so I'll not be able to make his comments. Um, but I would like to read aloud that um, comment from David Brink regarding Woody Way being open. I just want to say that I was disappointed that the decision was made to leave it open, citing neighborhood connectedness and reducing miles driven for reduced carbon emissions. While the gate was up, pedestrian and bike traffic was allowed, which I think actually connected our neighborhoods. Essentially, no cars going to and coming from the Presidio neighborhood actually stop in Boulder Point. So opening Woody Way has the effect of turning Boulder Point into an artery for hundreds of homes to go to and from the rest of Flagstaff. Okay. Um, I think I have an entry of Bruce Higgins, but we already heard from Bruce earlier. You didn't hear from me on this issue. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, I... <laughs> it's all right. I'm, I'm one of the bicyclists, so this will become clear. I live in Presidio, and both my spouse and I regularly travel into town by foot, bike, and auto. When driving, the Woody Way route always allows several choices depending on our destinations. That is much more timely than driving out to Woody Mountain, down it for a half mile, and then turning right onto a high speed Route 66. And that's particularly during high traffic periods. This difference will only become more evident once the 75 to 100 vehicles begin coming out of the recently approved Tract M here and the many hundreds more from developing the eastern part of Timber Sky. I support the staff recommendations to keep Woody Way open because it continues to treat all neighborhoods equally and is in line with the regional plan in addition to the previous points I've mentioned. Also, I don't buy the term cut through here. This is a city street and we all pay taxes for streets that should and should be entitled to use these routes. We previously funded with our taxes and that were part of the agreement when we purchased in this neighborhood. And road raging sign runners and speeders currently taking Woody Way eastbound would simply be pushed westbound through Presidio. Do children here count for less somehow? Is noise and fumes of accelerating vehicles here less important? How would any of that be fair? Whatever is ultimately decided, installing a traffic light at Woody Mountain in 66 would help. Even better would be installing an on-off ramp set at I-40 in Woody Mountain. Perhaps the city could encourage ADOT to get after these two solutions. Thanks. Thank you. Um, next, I have Era Lynn Novak. Yep, that's me, thank you. Um, I live in Presidio and I am um, I'm on Woody Way. I'm on the west southwest corner. Um, and I am pretty much 50 50 on if it closes or opens. But my concern is if we put traffic calming there, it will be additional noise. And just like Garrett Hall, I've had to close my windows because the noise is horrific. Um, the diesel exhaust is terrible. And people are disregarding the stop sign they just run the stop sign um it's it's a concern for me i try to back out of my driveway and people turn without regard to me backing out of the driveway um there's a considerable amount of traffic there when it's snowing that woody way is not plowed appropriately and there is a lot of ice that gathers on that road because it's shady I happen to have the shady sidewalk, so uh, it's very icy, but that street is also icy and there's a lot of spinning tires. So please take into consideration that it is shady. And if you're going to put some type of traffic calming in there, it's going to be more people slamming into my brick um, and then my house. I've had two times people when it was snowing slamming into my um brick fence. I live on Mission Timber. So um, please take 
those things into consideration, close it or open it. I don't have uh, a vote on it either way. Um, one, I'm happy one way or the other, but please take into consideration these, um, the shade and that it is slight, that Woody Way is very slick and the noise is, is very terrible. By traffic calming, we're gonna add more noise and it's very loud. Thanks. Thank you. And then I have Brian Lee Wilson. I think we heard from you, Brian, on university. Not yeah, and this is a comment on Lee Way, if not, it's okay. Okay, thank you, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Um, others have made comments on the various options listed in the agenda, so I, I don't really want to take time to repeat uh, you know, the same comments or the same ideas, but I uh, can say that I've heard some concerns about option number six, which is turning X handle and university into a one-way loop. Um, we received a copy of this agenda on Friday and actually owners received an email with that information. But, you know, that's still just a couple of days, uh, which is a short notice for everyone to process a new idea. Uh, you know, if the commission does decide to move forward with that option, I guess I'm saying I'd like to ask for some additional time just to notify owners so that they can process it and organize, uh, you know, some comments and feedback, uh, you know, if they need to for the uh, uh, commission or for the uh, city council. But separately, I just want to point out that there are other traffic issues in Boulder Point, uh, you know, beyond the Woody Way Gate and University Avenue area. Uh, one example is Highland Mesa, but not just near Axel. We recently had a pretty terrifying episode where half a dozen houses east of Majestic on Highland Mesa at 1.15 in the morning, a high-speed intoxicated driver failed to make the slight curve. They jumped the curb, totaling his truck and taking out the owner's two vehicles that were parked in their driveway. Uh, I think we may have the... Uh, uh, the, the owner, the resident uh, of that property here. But, uh, you know, if he wants to uh, tell me more, that's, uh, uh, that's great. Uh, I guess my final comment is that high speed and reckless driving incidents have multiplied since we way open, and uh, they're going to continue to, to grow as cut through traffic increases. So, thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Elizabeth Winslow. Yes, hi. I was not prepared to speak tonight, so I don't have anything um, quite as eloquently as some people, but I do um, appreciate and support that there, um, the recommendations that there is support to keep it open. I live in Presidio. Um, when they say that there is not, that we have two other exits, while we do, it's all onto the same road, um, and that road is targeted for an arterial um, roadway in the future, which will increase traffic on that. Um, they did, the commissioners that did mention the emergency access with the plow, if we closed it, um, that is a grave concern that we will not have emergency exits. Um, also, I agree with Bruce, what Bruce and Kim said. Um, I do also hear noise on my street. So, you know, I feel like noise is common everywhere. And so I, I feel empathy for the bad, um, the people that live on Axe Handle that are dealing with bad drivers, but there are bad drivers everywhere. And it is a public road that was always slated to be open and that we all paid for. And it's unfortunate that a few bad drivers are making um, the city council and others feel that it needs to be closed for everyone. Um, and also when you guys keep saying cut through, if I understood correctly earlier, um, cut through traffic doesn't mean Presidio into Boulder and Boulder into Presidio. It means people that don't live in either. And that road is designed for both neighborhoods to have access. And so I just wanted to kind of add that. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a question from Erilyn Novak, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back to that. I see the question. I'll circle back what I want to do now. Um, I don't think there were any others in the comments that I missed, so I'd like to now go to those that have raised their hands to speak. And I am going to start with Roger Modrell. Hi, my name's Marsha Modrell. 
I am Roger's wife. We live in the 2000 block of West University. And I agree with everyone that has spoken that the safety, the pollution, and the noise has increased tremendously since Woody Way was opened. There was discussion that there, <clears throat> by having Woody Way open, it allows for multiple services to be more effective, but I'm not sure that the commission knows that Presidio and Boulder Point do not have the same trash and recycle schedule days. So there isn't a lot of um, sharing of those municipal services. Also, University and Axe Handle is a residential street. Route 66 is a thoroughfare. If there's difficulty getting from Woody Mountain onto Route 66, I would request that the commission consider instead a stop sign stoplight would be fine to assist folks on getting out to Route 66, but also a roundabout would be very effectively allow people to move through that intersection without being trapped on Woody Mountain Road. There's concern about emergency services from Presid into Presidio, but there also is a locked gate that is working very effectively between Forest Highlands and Kachina Village. That gate is accessed by police, security, the fire department, and ambulances. There's not an issue with plowing. It is plowed. There are services that are immediately accessed into Kachina Village when necessary, so it does not affect. By locking that gate, it would not affect the emergency services. Highland Mesa now has parking on both sides of the street. I believe the commission needs to consider having parking only on one side of that street. When people are parked on both sides of that street that filter through from Presidio, they turn then and come down university because they can't get through there as fast as they want to get through. I have been forced to grab children by the arm to pull them out of university so that they aren't hit. That section of university that is east of um, Highland Mesa, the 1900 and 2000 block, the traffic mitigation strategies that have been put in place for around Thompson, those have been very effective. But when cars hit that corner, there is no way they're only going 30 miles an hour. I have sat there and watched cars easily going 40 to 45 miles an hour. And no, they race down university and you can hear the tires screech as they either turn onto Highland Mesa or they round the corner at university in Axe Handle. I appreciate the fact, I'll hurry. I appreciate the fact that that road has always been subject to when it's going to open. But as Garrett mentioned, things have changed significantly since the city initially put Woody Way on <clears throat> the premises. Bicycles, people walking, they were not um, hindered by not being able um, when, when the gate was up but I would respectfully request the commission to reconsider um, closing that gate or doing something to adequately slow people down so that those of us that live in Boulder Point continue to be safe. Thank you. Next, I have Mike Barnes. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Oh, OK, I would just like to echo some of the sentiments with regard to um, closing Woody Way. I think it I think it needs to be closed on the grounds that it creates a public safety hazard in, in Boulder Point. Um, since the since the gates been open, just anecdotally, I've been um, I've been nearly hit in front of my house by somebody traveling 
westbound on the night at the 1900 block of university at probably over 50 miles an hour they weren't able to stop even with their abs brakes um, fully activated um, my wife was almost hit in the driver's side door trying to turn into our driveway um, speeding tailgating not yielding to pedestrians um, the it's a neighborhood street and it needs to remain safe for children the elderly and those with special needs um, there's a number of other things that have been pretty effectively touched on from by other residents so i'll go ahead and leave um, leave some of those as they are i think that um, having woody way open um, really um, they've this idea of interconnectivity is sort of a euphemism that kind of covers up all of the negative effects that this is having on our neighborhood and i think that it has the effect of invalidating the traffic design of our neighborhood um, if you look back at the um, at the site specific plan for woodlands village the um our neighborhood was conceived conceived as a residential loop so it wasn't designed to have a thousand vehicles a day speeding through it to access Presidio. So um, that's pretty much all I have on that. Thank you. I have a uh, Scott Courtright. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, thank you. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a very interesting discussion. I'd just like to say that I'm in, in favor of keeping Woody Way open. I'm a, I'm a resident of Presidio, and and I have to say that uh, all the points that people bring up are, you know, they're interesting and they're valid, and everybody has their own angle. But it's it's no different than any conversation I've had in any neighborhood I've lived in the state of Arizona, be it in Phoenix, uh, up here. Um, they're all concerns that aren't unique to Boulder Point and Presidio. Um, I'd also, you know, having come from Phoenix, I'd also like to just draw parallels to. Awatuki and the, and the Loop 202 freeway. Uh, Awatuki was sort of like it was Phoenix's cul-de-sac for 40 years and everybody knew that they were going to put a freeway in and when they put the freeway in it was a big surprise but it had been on the books forever and I think Woody Way is the exact same thing if they didn't want a road there there'd be two houses where Woody Way currently is so um, I just think that it's a it's a very it's a highly important access point for both neighborhoods and it's kind of unfortunate how Presidio has been somewhat vilified by uh, the Boulder Point folks. Um, I'd like to point out that, you know, the people are speeding in Boulder Point, they're, they're speeding in Presidio. So it's our problem also. It, it doesn't stop once they leave Woody Way, they don't become model drivers. And so, you know, we deal with the same concerns. I have concerns about my kids playing in the street. I stare at people that are speeding going down the street. Um, that's just the way it is in today's society. So I just want to put that out there and um, again, say that I support keeping the road open and I uh, thank everybody for their time. Thank you. Next, I have Aliona Semionova. Please correct me if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. No, that's good. My name is Ali um, and I'm a resident here in Presidio in the Pines. And um, I would like to um, say that Presidio um, so Presidio and the Pines neighborhood, we're not all partying students and reckless drivers. My neighbors are families with young children and some are retired residents. Uh, we also have amazing community who help each other shovel snow and look after each other's homes. Unfortunately, this is not the first time some vocal Boulder Point residents paint Presidio in the Pines as a menace to Boulder Point and calling our neighborhood a monstrosity on social media. <laughs> I personally experienced this um, discriminatory attitude uh, while riding scooters there with my four years old son before the gate uh, was open. And the statement was made <laughs> behind my back, but meant to be heard. I was told that I need to go ride on my side of the gate. 
As a mom, I can relate to speeding and reckless driving problem in both our neighborhoods. My husband and I, uh, we chose to build our house with less square footage on our lot so we could have a little backyard for our son because the traffic in front of our lot would not allow for any play or gathering. I witnessed one of the petitioners having gatherings in their driveway overflowing onto the sidewalk and onto the road while Woody Way uh, Road gate was closed many times. Though I understand the disappointment the Boulder Point residents uh, feel uh, being not being able to use their front yard in this manner, we, we never had that option here in Presidio. If you would have drive through Polo Circle on weekend, you will see at least five slow signs that parents put out by the street when their kids are home, cautioning drivers and control the speed. I would like to point out that our neighborhood did not appear overnight and petitioners were aware of this arrangement, the arrangement that was made regarding Woody Way Road for many years. In all fairness, the petitioners knew there would eventually be an increase in traffic and possibly some reckless drivers like for many other homes nearing the intersections. Um, they did not act on it with this foresight. And um, during the council meeting, um, council member Jim uh, McCarthy mentioned um, opening Woody Way Gate to provide an additional westbound and eastbound city road was promise that was made to Presidio residents. Many of us uh, made decisions to invest into the property near Woody Way based on that promise. My uh, husband uh, was born and raised here in Flagstaff and I'm an immigrant naturalized citizen and um, I've been here for over 11 years. It took us over eight years of hard work to be able to purchase our own home and we greatly cherish our home and our neighborhood. Like all Presidio homeowners, we were assured by the developer that Woody Way will be available to us uh, when construction in Presidio will be coming to an end. I understand the petitioner's quality of life has been affected, but making requested changes to Woody Way uh, will affect the quality of life for the entire neighborhood. I can't tell you how many times while walking with my son, I yelled at drivers to slow down and I was given a one finger salute, excuse me. Almost all of us experience this behavior in Flagstaff, uh, but I believe there are multiple ways to improve the safety on this intersection, such as no parking on Woody Way Road, traffic barriers and speed bumps. To conclude, I'd like to say that Woody Way Road is a part of very important route connecting two neighborhoods and not all Boulder Point residents agree that closing out this road, no making it one way will have a good input impact on our neighborhoods and uh, it would certainly benefit a handful of residents whose houses are located close to this intersection but overall it will separate our neighborhoods and uh, cause further division with Thank the new you. development of sky cottages yeah. for sky there will certainly be increased traffic on route 66 and possibly more lights and honestly, Milton and 66 is already quite a nightmare, especially during the rush hours. But please, Alex. Approving this petition will show preference and will create a president. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, next, I have Greg Clifton. I'm wondering if this is our city manager, Greg Clifton, or perhaps there's another Greg Clifton in flag. <laughs> welcome, city manager Greg Clifton. Oh. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you for the welcome and thank you for all that you do, Madam Chair, and to the entire commission. Uh, fortunately for all of us, there, there's only one Greg Clifton um, and not two. Um, I listened to the comments at council during both these petitions and wanted to sit in to hear the comments tonight. I have not offered my own comments and generally would not take sides on these issues. They are delicate and very nuanced issues and, and uh, this one definitely so. Uh, I'm going to try to make my comments fairly neutral in that regard. Uh, this matter does need to get back to council. They asked me uh, very clearly to make sure it gets on the agenda uh, and I've already seen that in the staff reports and in the narrative earlier. So yeah, it's going back to council and council will be quite interested in hearing what the commission has to say about this. Um, my observations are as follows. Um, 
as I look at the road layout between these two neighborhoods, um, and, and I do not want to offend anybody in saying this, but it, it does strike me that the connector that we're talking about here was not designed well, um, and that's probably not because of anybody's oversight. It's just a, a product of the circumstances with one neighborhood being built and another one being developed much later, uh, and then this T connector between them. Um, and, you know, as as we hear and read in the regional plan about the, the needs for connectivity within our neighborhoods and nobody would dispute the benefit of that. Um, I, I also think it's a neutral thing to say that this type of connectivity may not have been envisioned um, more uh, uh, well laid out roads in, in a way where you're not having a choke point, if you will, uh, between two neighborhoods is, is probably what was envisioned. Uh, as you look at these from an aerial viewpoint, it, it certainly looks like the neck of an hourglass uh, as, as you have the two neighborhoods with this small connector road. I don't know uh, where that leads us or th where, where it leads the commission in trying to find resolution to this complex problem. Um, I, I, we can't undo uh, something that has probably not been designed in the best way. Uh, I would add that the uh, regional plan, and I've read the transportation section a couple of times of late, uh, in addition to speaking to connectivity, uh, obviously speaks to quality of life and, and safety. Uh, so these are all a very important points. I'm very troubled to, to see that underlying this now, we, we now have two neighborhoods that are perhaps becoming a little bit polarized uh, because of this, or vilified is a word that I've heard and uh, that does not serve the city well. Uh, and I'm, I, I just wonder how we could navigate a way through this to where we're not pitting one neighborhood against another. Um, that is something we need to be mindful of. Uh, so I just want to thank you, um, Madam Chair, and thank the commission for the very heavy lift that you're performing here. Uh, not an easy one. And uh, I'll be uh, interested in, in the deliberation of the commission and what the outcome is. I, I don't have good answers for you tonight. I'm just listening intently uh, and in and, and my service as your city manager uh, will want to see this thing through. And, and uh, I think council will be struggling with their decision at the tail end. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Right. Uh, next, I have Andrew. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, so my name is uh, Andrew. P. I live in Presidio. So with all the comments, but I actually has stuff written down, but it seems to have changed over throughout the other comments that people have made. And it seems like the community has gotten so sheltered because this gate has been closed for so long, knowing that it was going to open. So it hits me that if they were to have this closed, who becomes the bearer of responsibility in a worst case scenario that emergency services can't get through? Is it the petitioner or is it the city? And it just seems like people are no longer considerate and respectful to each other. And that's why you don't that's why you don't have people following stop signs or vice versa. And, it, and it's kind of sad to see that people are just being villainized because of a gate. So that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Next, I have Whitney. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Please go ahead. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. Um, I am a resident of Presidio. I promise you we are not all evil. Um, I've lived here since 2014. We um, we're under, always under the impression that the Woody Way would be open. Um, I do drive it daily to take my children to school and back. I am a reasonable driver. I am a mother. I am aware. Um, I just, I don't want, I don't mean to reiterate a lot of things that were said tonight. I do have tremendous empathy for the residents of Boulder Point. I can completely understand. Please I, I apologize. I'm so sorry for your situation. But I just want to reiterate that us residents in Presidio have had many promises broken to us by the developer. Um, however, this was a promise made to us not only by the de developer, but also by the city of Flagstaff. And if we cannot trust 
the promises and guarantees of the city of Flagstaff, who can we trust? Um, that's really all I have to say. I am in support of keeping this open and I am also in support of whatever needs to happen for calm traffic calming, anything like that. That's all, thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other hands raised. I'm gonna go back to the, the chat. Um, I did receive a follow-up message from um, Jason Knackert. I will read one more. Um, we are aware of the problem with the proposed Woody Way 14 plus years ago. And we're very vocal about it then to the city and the PNZ, but the best we could get was for them to kick the can down the road and many years until Presidio was built. We were promised the issue would be studied and a decision would be made. It was the best we could do at the time. Um, I do have a question. Um, from Erilyn Novak um, wanting to know how was it decided that only the south side of Woody Way has no parking? And um, maybe that's a, a question for you, Jeff or Stephanie, if you wouldn't mind answering that, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, I can take that one on. Um, to my knowledge, it was 100% random. Um, it was either the north side or the south side, and at that time we chose the south side. I believe that even happened before we opened the gate, that that parking was um, eliminated there or prohibited, so random. Can I, I mean, I have that, I have a, I have a problem with that. I'm at 2341 West Mission Timber, which is the southwest side in the Presidio neighborhood. I have a, if it was random, then... Can we put it on the other side because I have no parking in front of my house because I have the fire hydrant in front of my house and now I have the other side of my house with no parking now and if it was a random decision it would be better to move it to the other side because that's where the stop sign is the north side thank you for that comment um I think when we go into discussion um that was one of the items that we will discuss um so comment was heard and received um i want to do a final call for public comment um i see council member mccarthy you have your hand up i would like to if it's okay with you close public comment and then i can start with you as part of discussion on commission that's fine okay um final call did i miss anyone who would like to address the commission on this matter? Right, hearing or seeing none, um, and I close public comment and like to go into commissioner discussion, starting with Council Member McCarthy. Okay, I I just want to give a little history on where we got where we are. Um, I often hear the comment that council made the decision that when 90 percent of the presidio was built out we would open the gate um, that was not the original decision the original decision and i this is long before i was on council i think it was you know 14 15 years ago i happened to be at that meeting and the decision that council made at that point was that I believe there was a certain timeline, like five years, that it would be it would be opened in five years. Now, I don't remember any discussion about, well, we'll open it and then do a study and all that kind of stuff. My understanding from that, my recollection of that,